choose to summer in Wisconsin, you know about Elkhart Lake, a beautiful 300-acre lake surrounded by small-town charm, lots of great places to eat, and oh yes, motorsports. This is the home of Road America, and there is always something rolling there. Today, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series for the fans who want to see the stock cars run the four miles. Welcome to Countdown to Green from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin and Road America. Gorgeous afternoon and it couldn't be much better for those of us bringing you the action here on NBC. 20th race of the season for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and all things are lining up for the playoffs coming up in seven more races. Weather looks good, 80 degrees, 50% humidity, that is low and feeling great for the fans and for the drivers as well. Dave Burns with you here this afternoon, along with two drivers who had mega at NASCAR's highest level, Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton, and they also raced a lot in this Xfinity Series. 38 wins between the two of them, so they know what's going on. And they know winners. Lately, it has been all about two of them. John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. He won at Atlanta to get things rolling for himself. Yeah, not with the best car, but able to win. And sometimes that's more fun as a driver, but I tell you what is really fun is when you do have the best car, and he did that at New Hampshire and took it to victory lane also. Yeah, he and Austin Hill are having a great battle. Austin Hill is a tough, gritty driver. He's bringing the fight to John Hunter Nemechek, looking for his first NASCAR championship. And they're not the only winners so far in the 2023 season. Seven have locked themselves in, DJ, but those drivers in white, they've still got points to think about. Yeah, a lot to do there, but uh, the two guys at the top are separated by 13 points in this battle for the regular season championship, and they've amassed a ton of playoff points that could be very beneficial when we get to those playoffs. Why do we hear from the driver of the 21 car, Austin Hill? He's standing by with Kevin Lee. Well, Dave, Austin Hill uh, got maybe a little bit of bonus coming back from the pit speed penalty to win a Pocono. Now coming into this race, a little work to do from 14th. What can you do from there? Well, I mean, definitely not where we wanted to start. Um, we were wanting to be somewhere inside the top 10. <laughs> Thought we were a little bit better than 14. Just uh, there's a lot of things I can do better inside the car. And then there's there's also things that we've, we've looked at. Um, overnight that, that we can do better inside the race car. So uh, it's going to be one of those races today where survival, I think, is going to be key. Uh, making it to the end of the race, making all 45 laps, see where we end up. Hopefully hopefully we have a nice, smooth race um, and keep cutting into that, that lead on the 20. Considering where you are in the playoffs right there, if you don't have a winning car, what does the approach become today? I think the approach just becomes getting as many stage points as we can at the end of both stages and uh, just finishing somewhere in the top 10 and, and getting out of here with a with a decent points day. Even if we lose a little bit from the 20, won't be the end of the world. Uh, and we'll go on to the next next race at uh, Michigan and see if we can get the job done there. Good luck today. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Austin Hill, one to watch. And certainly as we get closer to the playoffs, Dave. And Kevin, as you mentioned, coming from 14th place, he'll have some cars to cut through. And these fans will love it. They have lined this four-mile course once again to see the NASCAR stock cars in the Xfinity Series race again. Good crowd there on pit road as well. We'll have to clear them off and go racing in just a little bit. Cole Custer will hopefully get another road course victory. He's also in the playoffs. And A.J. Allmendinger uh, AJ, and Justin Allgaier, he as well, will be in with A.J. Allmendinger. We'll talk more about him next. day for him. Yeah, buddy. There have actually been 13 different winners in 13 Xfinity Series races here at the track. Those three are in the field today. Clements qualified 31st, Allgaier third, and on the pole today, the driver of this car, the 10 of A.J. Allmendinger. Dale Jarrett, this is interesting because in the Cup Series, he's a full-timer. Over here, he's a part-timer, and in the Cup Series, he is just below that cut line heading to the playoffs. 
Yep, but why would we come here then and not be in Richmond to practice and qualify his car there? And it's the, the simple answer is this team is built around winning, getting checkered flags and winning races. And that's what AJ has told us all week. I think that you know, my personal opinion was to be there, but Matt Colley, Chris Rice, they make the decisions uh, in what goes on with this race team. And winning is, is the most important thing for them. And this is where they have their driver today. Yeah, and AJ talks about always wanting to have a good time and have fun. Well, look at those stats the starts, the wins, but more importantly than that, more wins and laps led on road courses than the entire rest of the field today. <laughs> so why is it fun? It's fun because he comes and he takes their trophies. Let's hear from AJ. He's with Matt Yoakum. Dave, while the field is chasing points, A.J. Allmendinger here in Elkhart Lake, trophy hunting, and it certainly has been an intriguing debate this past week, Richmond versus Road America. How tough and what went into the decision to be here? I feel like that was a much bigger debate for all you guys. Like, for us, it wasn't, wasn't that hard. You know, Matt, Matt Colleg loves trophy hunting. Uh, you know, ultimately, he left it up to, to Chris Rice and myself, and I was going to do whatever Chris <clears throat> and Matt wanted me to do, but uh, it, it's about going out there and having fun and, uh, just Derek Krause did a great job watching cup practice of, of getting that 16 Action Industries tuned up, but uh, this Leaf Home Water Solution Chevy is fast, and it's all about here enjoying our lives, man. I love, no doubt I love road course racing. I love Road America. It's a racetrack we haven't won at, uh, and at times we struggled at, so that was part of the reason of coming here and trying to make this Xfinity program better, but at the end of the day, we just want to go win trophies. He wants to put a big check mark next to a trophy here at Elkhart Lake. And gosh, when you look at his stats, 18 top two finishes and 26 <laughs> road course starts, I'd say it's A.J. against the field here today. Dave? The numbers are very, very good for A.J. We'll see how he does. When we come back to this scene, we'll go to pre-race ceremonies. Welcome back to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and Road America, established back in 1955, and it has had a storied history since then. To get things kicked off today for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, let's go trackside for pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats for the presentation of colors by the 128th Air Refueling Wing Honor Guard. Please welcome Donnie Floyd from Motor Racing Outreach to provide today's invocation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for a beautiful day in the state of Wisconsin. God, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the sport of racing. God, we ask that you protect us today. You be with these drivers, these crew members, these officials, that you protect our fans, that we have a great day in racing and God we ask that as we move forward that we remember your redemptive plan we thank you for your son Jesus Christ and his salvation to us and we pray God Lord that you give us your extended mercy and grace we pray this in Christ's name amen and now here to perform the national anthem for today's race please welcome international recording artist Anton Petenpole Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Let's hear it for Anton Pete Cole of today's wild by the T-20 and T-20. 
What a beautiful scene. 38 cars gridded and ready to race at Road America. We'll fire the engines when we come back. NASCAR and IndyCar, let's go racing at the Brickyard. This is the greatest racetrack in the world. We're racing at Indy. Dust is flying. It's the Brickyard, baby. A lot of three wide, four wide, five wide. Three wide on the brake. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. God, I love this place. Magic is made here at Indianapolis. Great job, boys. Great job. You just won in Indy. Indy, baby, let's go! This is like a festival of motorsport. For the NASCAR Xfinity Series, seven races remain until the playoffs begin, and Sheldon Creed is just a scant 49 points above the cut line. Yeah, Riley Herbst, plus 26, an approved road course racer, and the guy that we all know is a good road racer trying to catch him, Parker Kligerman. Just underneath the cut line also is Brett Moffitt, 49 below for small AM racing. Yeah, Brandon Jones, 54 back, crashed on the first lap yesterday, so he has no racing and no practice on this new surface. And look at these races coming up. It'll include road courses, and then, of course, uh, others as well. But the road course today, very, very important as an indicator of what we could see heading to the Xfinity Series playoffs. Here is Parker Kligan right now getting buckled in. Jeff Burton, what's he thinking? Well, I, look, right now he's thinking about how do I catch Riley Herbst? That's what's on his mind. And, but how do I do that? And that's hit my marks. Don't make mistakes. He knows he's in a tight point battle, but he knows he has races to do it. It's not desperation for Parker at this point by any means. No, they're a long way from that, and, and a lot can happen here today. I, you, I think you pointed out great. These drivers that are battling for these points stay on this course. That's going to be difficult. Easy to say, hard to do. And the, you look at the seven races coming up, those points may be achievable mathematically, but it is really difficult. You almost have to win if you're below the cut line. Yeah, it's so difficult. You have to, and plus you have to assume other people are going to win. So there's not, and that's going to automatically lock them in the playoffs if they're behind you in points. So you have to be on full offense. The question, though, and DJ and I both know this, when do you go on offense and when do you play defense? Those decisions, those split-second decisions are what determine a championship and also who loses it. Yeah, and here today, strategy is going to be something that's going to be difficult to, to deviate from anyone else just because of the laps that we have and the stage breaks where they fall. So you're going to have to figure out maybe somewhere else along the way. Uh, but the biggest thing is give yourself a chance at the end of this day and see what may happen. And, DJ, these drivers follow the points, even though they don't like to talk about it a lot. They know when they're racing that guy next to them who they're fighting in the points. Are they aware of that? Do they try to block that out during the race? You know, you're just trying to take the race. You're, you're not really concerned at who it is. It's more about what you can do to gain on this particular day. You have to put up, try to apply pressure to the others. Yeah, focus on what you're doing right now. The outcome will be at the end of the day. But if you do every corner right, you do everything that you're doing right exact now at this moment, that's how you get results. Mentioned 38 cars in the field. Practice yesterday was chaotic. A lot of contact and off-course excursion. So the lineup will be a little bit jumbled. We'll show you that in just a little bit. We can't do it until we get the command to start engines. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome the general manager of motorsports for Wheelan Engineering, Peter Tizzi. Good afternoon. On behalf of Wheelan Engineering, the official warning lights of NASCAR, drivers, start your engines. Race fans. how they line up, and we'll drop a green flag and go racing on the road course. As crossing county lines just to make my name in the city. I work for this for all these years, and I wouldn't break it back down. I fought through all my fears and all of my frustrations.
what a season it's been for NASCAR's Xfinity Series. 19 down, 14 to go, and seven of those will be in the playoffs. Today, it's from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and Road America, the four-mile road course, which will challenge the drivers with 14 different turns as they try to navigate their way into the postseason. Dave Burns with you along with Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Kevin Lee, and Matt Yoakum on pit road this afternoon. On a gorgeous, gorgeous afternoon, you see the fans lined up like they're at a national park, and that's why they call this place America's National Park of Speed. 80 degrees, just 50% humidity. Fine time to go watch some NASCAR Xfinity Series racing. And as they get ready to roll off the grid and onto the track, let's take a look at what this place looks like and where it is in the world. Middle of Wisconsin, about halfway between Milwaukee and Green Bay. And that's a high look, Jeff, at the four-mile map. Well, it looks the same as it always has, but there's something major different. This is a repaved racetrack. It is slick as ice, and it is treacherous. Turn one is the first time we're going to go drive down in there side by side. It's going to be a heavy braking zone, a 90-degree corner. We're going to see drivers on the offense right here. You try to get too much, you run off, and you get in trouble. Yeah, and their next speed, high speed, corner coming up, high braking areas, turn five here. We've always seen a lot of action here. As they dive off in here the first time, I think we're going to see exactly how much grip or lack thereof going into this corner side by side. And if you're lucky enough to make it all the way around there without trouble, it's turn 12. And this also is a trouble spot because it's a great braking opportunity, a long straightaway leading to a heavy braking zone, which we all know creates passing opportunities. Drivers will be pushing the limits. It's also called Canada Corner, and some say if you miss the corner, that's where you end up. That's how it got its name. <laughs> There's the field just going through turn five now, and it wasn't this controlled in practice yesterday as you get a look at some of the numbers here. Practice was chaotic. It happened early, and it happened often for these drivers. Yeah, this racetrack, it is so slick, and the drivers are talking about if you get offline at all, this is what happens. You get in the grass, you make contact. Brandon Jones didn't even make a lap, and he got off course, just said the track was so slip. Here, it th up through the corner, he just showed a creed, misses it, and big damage. Yeah, and a lot of this happening in the, exactly the same spot. We expect that might start as early as the very, very first lap today. And these drivers are just finding this. The, the grip that they think they have with the new asphalt, if you get just outside of that groove, you find yourself in a lot of trouble. A yeah. lot of damage just getting off here, Jeff. Yeah, if you run off course. This, we've seen several cars have to go to backups just by running off course. The elevation of the racetrack is a little bit higher than the grass. Big damage. We've seen mechanical failures. This is going to be a huge test for, 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 for the drivers and the machinery. And that similar trouble spot that Dale Jarrett talked about is called the kink. It is high speed, and it's hard to hit just right. Yeah, and I'm sure they've got a lot of other names for it after yesterday, <laughs> but that, that part could get very serious as we get ready to start. City Series starting grid on your left there. 19 rows of two. There are some surprises, some really good stories. Look at row three. Sage Karam with a great qualifying run today. And look at row five. You see Sammy Smith. Good qualifying effort, but to the rear. And get used to that graphic. You're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> Josh Berry at row seven. He's also to the rear. Championship leaders we talked about. The 21 of Austin Hill. He's right there in row eight. Yeah, and of course, we talked about Parker Kligerman needing a good day here. He expected a good day coming here. Parker Retzlaff in row 10. He's a local driver from Wisconsin. Brad Perez making one of his several starts in the 44 car today. And these guys back in the field, they got a lot of work cut out for them. It's going to be hard to pass. DJ mentioned earlier, there's not many strategies that you can play today. You're going to have to pass a lot of cars on the racetrack and look at some of the big names starting in the back. Brandon Jones in the rear, Ryan Sieg in the rear, and Daniel Hemrick in the 11 car in row 16. It'll be fun watching them come toward the front. Let's head down to pit lane for more stories. Here's Kevin Lee. Dave, you mentioned Sage Karam. That sixth starting position is his best Xfinity start in his 20th. He's got a lot of experience, including some here, a nine-time Indy 500 starter. And back when he was 15 years old, he swore a pair of weekend races in an IndyCar development series, USF 2000, and it was here last year where he was having one of his great Xfinity runs, challenging for the top five, easily inside the top ten, when Noah Gregson made a hard right after they had been banging, sent Karaman to the wall, into the race for him and others in this race last year. So that took an opportunity to weigh. He's been hoping to get back, and this deal came together about three weeks ago. It's a one-off for Sam Hunt Racing. By the way, that start is the 
best ever for Sam Hunt Racing. And Kaz Grala, their second car, equaled that in ninth. He tells me the car is even better than it qualified. He feels like they have a chance for him to get his best finish ever in Xfinity, which is fifth. So keep an eye on Sage Karam today. Now over to Matt Yoakum. Kevin, Brandon Jones' weekend has been anything but according to plan. DJ and Jeff documented his off-track excursion, forcing him to a backup car in the nine. I talked to him this morning. He simply said, now we're on to plan B, which is to be efficient and execute. My goal is to pick off eight to 10 cars per stage, put myself in a position to have a shot in that final stage. But this place is so tricky. The one thing he mentioned, once you get off that pavement, the, the aggregate, the line, it's gone, and it's just almost like being on black ice. So keep that in mind today as these guys try to go two and three wide at times, fighting for position. But Brandon Jones says, I've got to be smart and work my way to the front. Much easier said than done. Guys? Thanks, Matt. Jeff, who have we got your eye on? Well, a lot of talk about A.J. Allmendinger, obviously, but do not close your eyes on Cole Custer. He's won two of the last uh, three road course races in the Xfinity Series. Remember, he ran full-time in the Cup Series for three years and won a race, and he was moved back into the Xfinity Series. He wants to prove to the world that he belongs in the Cup Series. He is a good road racer. He will do everything in his power to take the fight to A.J. today. And what about Justin Allgaier, Jeff? Well, he, to, look, there's a, he's a 37-year-old. He's a senior spokesman of this series. <laughs> if you want to look at somebody about how to do it, there's your guy. A lot of young drivers talk to him, take advantage of his experience. And by the way, he takes the fight to them. He is a very good race car driver, three road course wins in his career. And he is not afraid of contact. He is not afraid of the challenge. He will be pushing hard. Yeah, we talked about the bubble battle quite a bit, but there can't be enough said here. Riley Herb, who sits in that 12th spot right now, he's finished seventh here the last two years. Another good solid day could be uh, very helpful to his uh, wishes, which would be to stay inside that top 12 and maybe even advance this spot. But the main focus is stay on track and keep Parker Kligerman behind him. And Parker is the other driver that I'm looking at as we talk about this bubble. Parker's accomplished road racer. This, he came here with his eye on the fact that if I, he can go get a solid top five, that he could gain some more points and get closer to that 12th spot. There are three Wisconsin-born drivers in the field today. I already mentioned Parker Retzlaff and the 31 car from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Uh, what about the one of Sam Mayer? He is from Franklin, Wisconsin, not far from here. So devastated last week when he got into his teammate late in the going at Pocono. Uh, very emotional about what happened there that day. Uh, still looking for his first win in the series. And in on points for now, he would like to improve that position. And Josh Balicki, he's a driver who will be in car number 91 today. Josh grew up in Monaco. Nominee Falls, Wisconsin, which is just outside of Milwaukee, and raced his own car here for a lot of years. He instructed others how to race Road America, and one year he noticed on the Xfinity Series entry sheet there was a driver not listed. The car appeared to be open, so he made some phone calls. He said, hey, can I come drive your Xfinity Series car? And that's how he got started. He was bold, and he's quick, and today he'll start in the top 10 in that 91 car. Just a few of the stories we'll be covering for you here this afternoon on NBC for the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And Jeff, I want to talk a little bit more about that repave. Not since 1995 has new pavement been laid down here at Road America. And it's not that that is going to be tough. The line that they race on is great. It's when they get outside that line. Well, it's super slick, and every driver's talked about if you get offline, the car doesn't stop as well, it doesn't turn as well. We saw a lot of incidences in practice because of that and what that does is if you started in the back on a road course normally you have a lot of strategies you can play but this weekend because the cup teams are in richmond there's limited pit crews here so there's controlled stops there's no live pit stops meaning you know these guys are not full-time pit stop guys there's a minimum time you have to spend on pit road there's stage one stage two you, and also a competition caution on lap 10 that's the only time you can put fuel in the car. So you cannot play a strategy to try to get yourself to the front. You might can, DJ. It might be an opportunity, but it would be a massive gamble to try to get to stage one without putting fuel in it. So the only way that we is clear to us sitting here right now to get to the front is to drive your way to the front. And you're going to have to do it on a track that has been a that has paid a price for over pushing and trying too hard 
that puts those guys in a very difficult situation. Dale, I don't know if it happened to you in your career, but at times when you've had a really fast race car, but for whatever reason you've had to line up in the back and find your way through, how difficult is it? Uh, very difficult to keep your patience, I think. <laughs> and that's the biggest thing. You know, we, we heard Brandon Jones, that they were saying about that he could move forward, uh, move eight, ten spots. There's going to be that many cars that are going to run off the track in front of him. So <laughs> if you can just stay on, you're going to make some passes. But, you know, one thing that we haven't talked about is we've, we've seen tempers flare here mm. during the year. That could possibly start as quickly as turn one right here because just what Jeff was talking about, they haven't been side by side at speed down into turn one yet, and there's going to be a part of this track that doesn't have grip, so the temper could start right here in a minute. Let's hope these guys didn't watch the cup race from last week because they, they could bring that same <laughs> temper to this week. There has been a lot of hostility in NASCAR lately. Remember that front row. Cole Custer, he is racing for the Xfinity Series Championship in that red, white, and black Mustang. To his right, that is A.J. Allmendinger. He has come here uh, first before he goes to Richmond Raceway to race in the Cup Series just to get a trophy, just to get a win for Kyron and Matt Colley. That is the only thing on his mind today. And, guys, he is one of the best at it. He will have control of the field as they come toward the start line to get things rolling here this afternoon. 45 laps, 182 miles total. And the first one of the checkered flag, well, that's the one that gets the trophy. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And now for the 10 car and the 0 0 on top, it is the green flag displayed. They're racing at Road America. Almondinger clearing the double zero of Custer as they go into turn one, but there's still double file behind him. Yeah, you can see Cole Custer really wanted no part of trying to go in there, even if he could have, uh, beside of A.J. Umden. Didn't want to take that chance right here. That's three experienced drivers right up front there that understands that they can get themselves out ahead of the rest of the pack right here. Sam Mayer's black and blue one. He slides just in front of the black 24 of Sage Karam as they roll now down the other side of the track toward that tricky turn five that G.J. talked about. Heavy braking, high speed. We see a lot of cars have trouble right here. You see uh, the seven car... Heavy breaking down into the corner. Justin Algar making a great move, but behind, look out at all the two wide. Look at that. Cole Custer was right back to the inside, crossed him over right there. Algar got in there so hard, took a while to get it turned and back to the throttle. Cole Custer back to second. Good racing on lap one. Riley Herbst in the black 98 monster car. He runs fourth, just looking for an opportunity. Sam Mayer's going to try to make a move. He'll do it in turn eight. That is a high-risk move right there. That's a takes a late breaking move. Riley Herbst did a nice job of recovering from that. Only lost the one spot. Through the portion of the track they call the carousel. Long, long right hand, almost a full circle. Now down to the high-speed area toward the kink, the one that's caused all the trouble this weekend. Sheldon Green with a great big block right there. Both he and John Hunter. John Hunter in that 20 car, Sheldon in the two red car. Both of them had trouble leaving that corner. Yeah, you might get away with that block right at this point in time, but uh, I would say these laps wind down, which is a long way away, that that's going to become a lot more risky. Did you see that move by Connor yeah. Bozak? That was an aggressive move in the 19 car to pick up that spot. Picked up a position on Austin Hill's blue and white 21. Mosak now on the red and blue 19. There he is. That Toyota's looking good. Clipping just off the track a little bit. We know that can be dangerous. There's the 51 of Jeremy Clements, a backup car. He had to start at the rear of the field. This is what we talked about right here. How much grip does the, does the racetrack have offline? Algar got in there trying to just show his car, see if he could take that spot. The 26 car making a move of Kaz Grala. He was very fast in practice. Algar still on attack. Algar's going to get second from Cole Custer. Done. Yeah, you mentioned Kaz Grala with that good pass. That, don't be surprised if he finds himself in the mix before this afternoon is over, at least up inside the top five battling. Kaz will be in the red and white 26. He just got eighth position from Sheldon Creed. Great deal of respectful racing right now, DJ. <laughs> I think yesterday, all the problems in practice got everyone's attention. And they said, hey, let's try to get through these first laps without issues. And I'm sure crew chiefs and car owners and spotters are reminding the drivers it's a long race. 
and Jeff, you mentioned it, competition caution at lap 10, NASCAR has told us on there or about. Uh, they want these teams to be able to get a look at their tires, to talk about what they've seen with this newly repaved track, because, uh, you know, they don't have any data at all. That's the 35 off track now of Stanton Barrett. Racing there with his team car, Patrick Emmerling in the black, number 53. Whoa. You can see the, you can see the back of the cars yeah. moving around. That's just the drivers trying to apply the throttle, thinking there's a certain amount of grip, and being, being surprised that the grip's not there. Yeah, Jeff, I think you had a conversation you were telling with, with the pole sitter and the guy that's the big favorite here, A.J. Allmendinger, talking about how difficult his track is, and this is a guy that was handling it best, so you know that everyone else is struggling even more. He was terrified when this race started. He's like, I have no idea what to expect. Chandler Smith made a pass on Josh Williams for 14th, going into Canada corner. That's the 16 over the 92. At Riley Herbst, he'd like to get a spot from Sam Mayer. Can he do it in turn one? Mayer hang it tough on the outside. But Riley's not going to give up. He's still got the preferred line going through the right-handers here. <laughs> and, who, and who's in the groove, Jeff? Is Riley in the groove or is Sam on the outside? I just say that was, again, some very respectful drive, and Riley could have driven it in there a little bit deeper and wisely on lap three, making the decision to lift. Yeah, and you can see they both slowed down a little bit more, not exactly sure what to expect because you can see John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 gain a little uh, time on both of those as they kind of tiptoed their way through that. Another aggressive braking zone move by the 19 car, Connor Mozak. <laughs> He's got a lot of road racing experience in the Trans Am Series, has raced on this racetrack, has, has a really limited amount of racing compared to most people his age. Most people his age started racing at five, six years old. He started much, much later trying to make up that experience, driven all kinds of different race cars, doing a really nice job here. Sheldon Creed drives for Richard Childress Racing in that red and white number two. Matt, you have more? Dave, the RCR cars came to Elkhart Lake with a slightly different setup, trying something new compared to what they've run at Portland, Chicago, and Coda, and it did not work. Both cars, Sheldon Creed told me, were just simply wrecking loose almost every lap, and it wasn't due to the new pavement, so they called the auto, went to something they've run in the past, much more comfortable going back to plan A, and he told me that this is one of the things that they need to do to, to generate some good momentum moving forward and to survive today here at Road America. Teammates running there, the two and the 21. Whoa, Connor Mozak got himself in trouble right there. 14 quarters, you got to nail all of them, right? Well, that was a good save. I yeah, thought he was, was. I thought he was going to go out of the park there for a moment. Yeah, you, you keep attacking this. Yeah, even though there are cars and we can look at, at more experienced drivers up here understanding how fast they can and can't go. But when you're trying to learn and make this really fast and do this lap after lap, you're going to find yourself in a really difficult spot. That, that was a... I guess he saved it or just got really fortunate. I'm not sure, but combination. Well, there's some pavement off to the side there. Uh, here at Road America, there's lots of configurations you can race as an amateur, and that's part of another track they run. That was why it was nice and smooth and paved. That helped him a lot. Well, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and say he knew it was there. Yes. That's where okay. he decided to push the car. <laughs> Works for me. The problem is we saw in practice yesterday that if you get off and you catch this grass, uh, the, the way the surface is there, that is tearing up the, the splitter, the front of these cars, quite a bit. And so you have to be extremely careful and, and calculating as to where you try to make that. See the 11 of Daniel Hembrick, the 18 of Sammy Smith. Those of these guys started in the back. They've gained a lot of spots. Hembrick up 15, Sammy up 12 spots. So, you know, with a competition caution coming at lap 10, if you, if, if Sammy Smith could drive himself up to 12-ish and the 11 car here and get it, follow him up there, that's a big game. Oh. And now they're in the fight. That's and, right. And that's, 
They've done a really good job in a very tough situation to get up through the field. Sammy Smith, a very young race car driver, got off to a hot start beginning of the year. Things cooled off some. He's been very consistent lately. That's what you like to see out of young drivers, rookie drivers, those yellow stripes on the back bumper. But it's calmed down lately. A lot of consistency, and now today he's bringing a lot of speed. Smith had to go to a backup car. Hemrick's team had to replace an engine. No replacement here. A.J. Allmendinger running strong and out front at Road America. Fantastic show at the front of the field at Road America. It is A.J. Allmendinger in the first Chevrolet. Justin Allgaier in the second one going for first. And there's Cole Custer right there. Allgaier will take the lead. A.J. moving out of the way of Cole Custer. You could see yeah. that, that he had been caught by Allgaier. Then Custer caught both of them, which led us to believe that the 10 car of Allmendinger did not have the pace. He looks loose to me. I see the back of the car moving around a lot. Yeah, I agree. It looks like he just can't attack the corners the way that we expect him to be able to do. And I think that AJ just saying right now, it's not time to take a chance and run off the course. There's going to be a time for an adjustment and try to make that. Or could have simply run it too hard and it got a little bit too much heat in these tires. And that's exactly what Chris Rice and AJ were discussing. AJ said the car just too tight on entry and starts to really swing to the loose side on exit, trying to get that forward bite. Chris told him, pressure's probably a little too high. Just hang on to it, and we'll adjust that when we hit pit road on our first stop. Yeah, so the conversation about air pressure being too high, they know on a 10-lap run they're going to get a competition caution. So you would want to start your car with a little bit more air pressure because you're not going to get a long run. So what you're hearing there is they just went, they feel like they went a little too far, which would make the balance of both ends of the car not well. It wouldn't turn well. It wouldn't make good rear grip. You can't fix both of those things with an adjustment. The only thing that would help both of those is air pressure. Seven laps complete, and now Cole Custer looking down the back end of Justin Allgaier there, going toward turn one, takes a peek, lets him see the headlights of the Mustang. Not going to try it here. Yeah, you just hope as a driver that if you move out of there a little bit, you've got the, that driver in front looking ahead or looking in his mirror and thinking, and maybe he drives in a little bit too far, and you can get, get yourself an opening there. Uh, not going to happen. Justin Allgaier's very experienced. He knew what was happening. But Custer's car looks really good, Jeff. Oh, I, both of these cars look really good. What, and I really like both of them under braking. They both are able to get into the corners really deep, and they're stable under braking. See the back of the car is not moving around any. The car is not shaking. They're both able to be very aggressive. And that's where you pass. You get a good run on corner exit, and then you try to outbreak the guy in front of you. The top three have led and won many times at the road courses. 21% of all the road courses run through the Xfinity Series and won by these top three. Let's hear more about the double zero from Kevin. Well, he's got a chance to go three for three. He's won the last two road course races. Those were his first two road course wins. So has there been an epiphany this year? Has it finally uh, clicked for him? No, not necessarily. He told me yesterday, I've always felt pretty comfortable on these road courses. I've done some things like Michelin Pilot Challenge races in IMSA to get better. We've had chances before. It just hasn't worked out. It's clicked this year as far as getting opportunity and getting a break. Now, coming into this race, he said the car is good, but I'm really worried because it's treacherous. <laughs> I mostly just want to survive, but now he's in position to think a little bit more about surviving. Yeah, but I think as you watch Cole Custer, as I watch his car, he's using up a lot less racetrack on the exit of these corners, and that tells me that a little bit more under control and that his car is only going to be better the longer these runs go. You may be familiar with Cole Custer, spent a couple of years at NASCAR's highest level in the Cup Series. This year, back to the Xfinity Series and trying to win a championship. Yes, yeah, see Cole Custer got a good run off the corner, uh, off the corner 14. That's a good one to get a run on because now you've got this long straightaway. Cole's going to show it and try to outbreak Algar. Top end speed for the seven car looking just a little bit better here. What about the braking zone? Will Custer try it here? Oh, he's right there. 
They're so equal under Brinke. The only way right now you're gonna be able to make this pass, DJ, is to be able to really get a good corner exit and get alongside Algar. They both have exceptionally good braking force. That is the problem with Amendinger. We're hearing that he does not have good braking, and that is not allowing him to keep up with this fight, and it's why he ultimately gave up the lead. You can see Amendinger now two plus seconds behind. There he is, the third white car in line. And, and what would you do, Jeff, if you were him? I mean, kind of save your stuff all over, you know, because you know you need big adjustments before you can really race for the win here. Finish third, you know, like <laughs> run, run third. Yeah, in this two, two to go, yep. right, yep. for the competition caution. Here comes Custer. Turn six pass. Can he make it work? Allgaier says no. Nice defense by Justin Allgaier. How about turn eight? <laughs> Cole says maybe on the outside here. Oh, Justin with a block. Here comes Cole down to the inside. No. That's fun, Race. That's fun to watch. He's got a good run right here. Nothing he can do with it, though. Not in the carousel. No, this is hold your line. Hold your line. Get a great exit heading toward the kink. And this is where you end up where we saw most of the wrecks yesterday. This right-hander lift a little bit early. Now go back to the throttle. And a lot of drivers, and they went back to the throttle, crossed over that curb, and got in the wall. And that's hard for Custer. He can't yeah, see. I see that. Yeah, I mean, he, Algar has a great view of it, but Custer right behind that seven car, he just can't see where to go. But you can tell Justin Algar wants to stay in front right here. He wants to control when things go back green after we have this competition caution. He wants to be the man in control. He's running extremely hard, using up a lot of racing surface. Back up the hill. This is where Custer got close last time. Again, a great run. Justin's car accelerates. Custer once again trying to outbreak him. Like DJ said, show him that I want this spot. Pull it along, trying to get alongside, but Algar's braking is just too good for him right now. Now that's going to go away. The, the braking does not stay the same throughout the whole race. What we don't know is which car is going to lose more braking than the other. Nine complete. NASCAR has told the teams lap 10 or thereabouts there will be a competition caution. Chance to catch their breath, see what the tire wear is like on this newly repaved Road America. Custer not close enough this time in turn five. No, but he just keeps worrying him, you know? He just keeps moving around. And that's aggravating as a driver. You, know, you, you glance in that mirror, you want to take one last glance. And, and so far, Cole Custer has gone to both sides here, so he's not making it easy. A little tap maybe right there. Oh, he's got a good run right here. On the outside, though, can he get underneath the seven? Great exit. Great exit. Looking to the outside here. I don't know if you want to do that in turn eight. Oh, Justin, heartbreaking. Back end comes out just a little bit. He holds him off. And this is where you hear the tires scream as they try to hang on with grip here through the long, winding right-hander called the carousel. Cole got another great run off the carousel. Now, once again, into this key. Cole, see how early he turned? He got to the bottom of the racetrack before the seven. That's because he, could, he can't see. He's got to overcompensate a little bit to make sure he doesn't miss the groove on the outside. Because if you miss the groove on that side, you end up in a wreck. Hummendinger now getting pressure from Herbst. That's for third. Yeah, AJ really struggling here. I, I think that, you know, he's just trying to make sure that he doesn't do anything to jeopardize the rest of this race. But yeah, and it could cost him a couple of more spots. Not the biggest issue. A couple of young drivers behind him who would be aggressive. Oh, this is trouble for Catherine Legg. And she does not appear to be under power. And on this racetrack, as big as it is, ah. it's it's when you have a mechanical issue, you're in big trouble. Meanwhile, track stays green for the moment. Allgaier still trying to hold off Custer. And here's Herbst giving a look in the mirror for Allmendinger. Doesn't make the move here. We keep talking about the improvement of a road racer. You see Catherine still on racetrack. Yeah, that has to bring out a caution. And I'm sure they will use this as the competition caution as Catherine Leg is stuck between turns five and six going uphill. So there was no way she was going to 
get further along. And these positions are determined by loops, scoring loops in the racetrack. It measures you where you were when the caution came out. Riley Herbst got by A.J. Allmendinger, but may not have got by him before he got to one of those loops. So it'll be interesting to see where they line him up. And that matters. That matters a great deal because he's racing Parker Kligerman. Parker's driven up to 11th. That's who they're racing for in points. He's driven up to 11th. Riley Herbst right now in third. We'll see where they line him up. But every spot could matter. It's a tough break for Catherine Legg. She just got the call a week ago to drive this race car. A couple of former NBA refs with their refology on the side of that car helped get her in this ride. And we're told you'll see Catherine three more times this year on the road courses for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Hopefully better luck next time. This is the competition caution, and we'll be back to see what happens next at Road America. Great racing so far on a sunny Wisconsin afternoon. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Toyota, let's go places, and by Progressive. Save when you bundle motorcycle, RV, and boat insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Beautiful Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. That was the Ostoff House. A nice place to stay if you get a chance to stay up here. And so much is walkable in town. And I mean, think about it. You could walk to the track. It, it'd be a mile or so. But uh, the track is just outside of Elkhart Lake. It's really a beautiful part of the country uh, called the Kettle Moraine area. And uh, if you ever get a chance to get up here, you have got to do it, especially if there's a NASCAR Xfinity race. It's so much fun going down there. The history. There's a, there's a lot of historic mark, markers where a racetrack went down through downtown. Fun, a lot of fun restaurants, a lot of ice cream, Dave. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. By the way, uh, just cleaning up a couple of things. Catherine Legg off track. She brought up this caution. Uh, and then also, uh, Kyle Sieg had a brake line issue, and he took the 28 car to the garage. This car, uh, nowhere in the garage uh, except yesterday because he crashed his primary car. This backup car by Sammy Smith, he has driven all the way up to uh, the 13th position from 30th. Uh, this young driver, 19 years old from Iowa, the one thing about him is once he gets back to a track, DJ, he nails it. This was his first ever Xfinity Series race last year, so, you know, ho hum. This year, he's just crushing it. Yeah, yeah really impressive. It just shows the talent that he has and, and how well he takes in everything that happens and, and, and applies all of that, that what he could do better, how they could be better uh, each time that he goes back. So that bodes well for him as he gets into the playoffs and thinks about trying to win a championship. And remember, this is a car that he had not driven until today because they had to go to a backup today. When I saw him this morning, I said, any concerns? He said, nope. You know, with Joe Gibbs racing, that the backup car is going to be just as good as the primary. So he was ready. He was optimistic. He said he's a little bit uh, looking for a better uh, drive off at this point on this pit stop. So they'll make a slight change. So they might be able to get the car even better than it has been so far, Matt. And the same for another driver who started in the back, and that is nine of Brandon Jones. The day not going quite as well as he had hoped. Remember, the game plan was to pick off eight to ten cars each stage. Right now, though, his biggest issue is just trying to get that nine machine to break. He says he does not have enough break. He's having to roll through the corner even more, just losing time. They're hoping to make some adjustments on that car as well when he hits pit road. It's a tale of two uh, guys to the rear there. Smith moving forward, Jones not so much. Yeah, that's frustrating as a driver when you know this is a relatively short race and, and you have to go. And it's so frustrating when you can, especially under braking DJ, when you can't out break somebody on a road course, it's almost impossible to pass. And, Brandon having problems under braking really hampers his ability to move forward. Yeah, getting no laps yesterday, as we pointed out, his his incident happened the very first lap on the racetrack yesterday. So he didn't, you know, he might have could have picked that up with their primary car that this might be an issue and things that you could have done, but there's not much you can do at this point in time about that. Jones in that bright yellow nine is outside the playoff look, looking in 15th and 54 points away. So he's got some work to do there too. And I believe, again, with seven races to go, G Day, I, I believe it's still going to take a win. Mathematically, maybe, but he's got to win. Yeah, I mean, just the drivers that he has to jump over, you know, it's not like they're laying back. And so that, that's going to make it even more difficult. So, yeah, I think they're certainly looking at, at wins, and he's got some tracks coming up that that very well could happen. 
Kyle Weatherman running in front of him in the four. Blaine Perkins behind him in the yellow 0-2. They'll all be coming to pit lane. Some modified pit procedures for this weekend. Again, the super fast, uh, well-tuned pit crews are all at Richmond Raceway this weekend. These will be the guys and gals who work in the shop, work on the road, and they'll have uh, basically all the time they need, Jeff, to change tires and fill the cars with fuel. Yeah, there, there, there are three opportunities to put fuel in the car, and the reason that they do that is to prevent people from pitting on the green and changing the strategy and using live pit stops uh, to help make that happen. It's just cost so much money. So this is the competition caution. So on this caution, you're gonna come in, put four tires on it and put fuel in it. The next time you come down pit road is at the end of stage one, and then again at the end of stage two. So if you think about it, you know, really these are 10 to 12 lap runs. There are no long runs in this, and that keeps people from having burning too much fuel and really keeps people from having an opportunity to mix up the strategy. And DJ, you don't have to pit if you don't want to. Don't have to, but there's really... <laughs> but look at them all. Yeah, we talked about this, that everybody's going to come because it, there's not really a strategy that works into this. You know, there could have, maybe for some guys at the back, could have early in this, if they would have just, you know, taken the first those first 10 laps kind of off and, and just set a pace to where they were saving enough fuel and got so, enough caution laps. But, you know, we didn't have a caution there, so you couldn't really apply that to a good strategy and, and a thought here. So everybody's going to be on pit road to see if they can make their car better. And remember, at the stages, there will be points awarded for where you finish there. No points awarded here toward the championship. Just a competition caution called by NASCAR. You see that 10 car of A.J. Allmendinger. He's coming to his pits, and there's a lot of work to do on that car. We heard him talking about not having front grip, not having rear grip, Matt, but what else are they working on? Well, looking at that seven car, Jim Pullman and Justin went through a long debrief of just how that car was on the first run. The one concern, the fuel pressure gauge was kind of bouncing. Also, he felt like that the tires, now keep in mind, fresh pavement, it is jet black, even hotter than what it normally would be here. He felt like they needed to go down in pressures even more to help with more forward fight later in the run, Kevin. Good start for the Stuart Haas racing cars. Cole Custer up to second, looking for road course win three in a row. Said he's a little bit loose here. He's going to take the four Goodyears with this free pass stop, essentially. Right behind him, you have the 98 Monster Energy car, Riley Herbst. He said he wants a little bit of a chassis adjustment, but they've been debating it. If we do this, it's going to impact the car here and vice versa. So you always have to give something up. But Herbst in good position right now. He comes in to this controlled stop, running in fourth, Matt. And service almost complete on A.J. Allmendinger's number 10. Now, Chris Rice told Allmendinger just to be patient and calm. We've got a huge game plan that we are going to execute when you hit pit road. At least five different changes on this 10 car. No forward bite. The car was really skatey all over the track, so they made a number, especially going down in the pressures in the back, to try to help him on corner exit. Remember, they came here only for one thing, a trophy, trophy hunting here at El Cart Lake. A lot of work left to do here, but remember, he is the Xfinity Series all-time road course winner. Incredible stats, so we'll see what he can do here with these changes on the 10. Team checking out the front of the car there, making sure that the uh, air inlet for the radiator is nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mentioned about Chris Rice telling A.J. He's the one person that can keep A.J. calm that I've figured out. <laughs> I think he might be the only person in the world uh, that, that can do that. Maybe but his wife. this is a voice. Huh? Maybe his wife. Yeah, I, she just keeps him in line. <laughs> uh, but keeping him calm is a whole different thing. But Chris Rice does a good job of that with him. Yeah, well, you're going to need to. He's got a lot of things going on. He's talking about the everything shorting out in the dash, having some electrical issues, concerned the left front brake fan's not working. So, you know, AJ's the kind of guy, he likes positive energy. He really does. He does not do well under negative energy. So he's going to have to get these problems fixed. And if this car, if he, they fix this car, he's going to drive it back to the lead. Yeah. There is Chris Rice in the dark shirt, president of Colleague Racing, helping make the calls here this afternoon. His driver's back on track, as are the rest of them. And when we come back here, we'll have a restart. They'll go side by side again, barreling off into turn one. Don't know what kind of brewers you think of when you think of Wisconsin. Yeah, how about the 2018 Brewers? They were here. And, of course, the Green Bay Packers. Plenty of brew up there at Lambeau Field. And the cheese heads. They're everywhere. Of course, they make a lot of cheese here. Very proud of the dairy industry in Wisconsin. That's not all. Great racing. Love to be here. Wish you were here with us as well. 
some Packers fans. You come to a Wisconsin track, you got to have a Packers easy up, right? Yeah, actually. Four ran, Badgers. Yeah. Ran across a Packers fan the other day out in Arizona, and I just said, hey, we How's he going to go without Aaron Rodgers? And he said, who? <laughs> Moved on. They are so over him, aren't they? He hmm. might be getting ready to find out who he was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we want to welcome you back to coverage of the Road America 180. The race just over 180 miles. You better plan for those last two with fuel because you're going to have to get there if you want to get the checkered flag first. Matt Yoakum. Well, Dave, down here on Pit Road, one thing the teams are looking at, remember, with this fresh pavement, looking at what the tires, so this is a tried and true Goodyear tire that they've used for several years at all the road course races, but with this new pavement, an added wrench thrown in the mix of just how this will uh, perform during the entire race, especially during the first run. Now, the one thing that you can do is lock up under braking while you're out on the racetrack, and that's exactly what A.J. Allmendinger did on his right front tire. You can see right here a little bit of a uh, flat spot and there was one other section as well you've got to be very efficient under braking but you've also got to execute and not put yourself in a bad position that's what several drivers have told me you got to be careful because if you flat spot your tires you have really uh, put yourself in a bad position and you'll have to hit pit road Matt thanks for the update as the drivers come to this yellow V in the road it's called the choose line. Jeff, why are they going right and left? Well, you can pick whichever lane you want. That's where you have to start. It was very interesting that Justin Algar in the seven car leading the race, Cole Custer didn't pick alongside him. Yeah. He went behind him and gave Amendinger the opportunity to go on the outside of Algar getting into turn one. I thought that was a very interesting choice. And now they will be coming to the green as the rest of the field packs up behind this now front row. Justin Allgaier in the orange seven and the 10 of A.J. Allmendinger, the white Chevrolet there on the front row. Custer and Herbst in row two. Mayer and Nemechek in row three. And D.J., they're still catching up at the back. They are trying to catch up. Up the hill into the green flag again, racing at Road America. Justin Allgaier legging it out. He'll clearly take the lead. Will Allmendinger challenge on the outside? He's going to. Now Allgaier with the advantage on the right-hand turns. He'll command the lead. Cole Custer needs to make this pass stick right here to make that choose that he made, his choice that he made right there to choose. Uh, beneficial and, and convince us, Jeff, that it was the right thing to do. <laughs> well, he's on the wrong side of the racetrack right now. <laughs> Approaching turn five, Allgaier is in the preferred spot. Now it's a competition of who can outbreak who. Amendinger pushing Cole Custer to the outside, and there you go. Oh, Sam Mayer looking for a way around Custer. The blue car trying to get around the white car. Custer, oh. little contact. So now Cole Custer has to rethink that. Yeah. He cannot give up the front row, especially to a guy like Amendinger. I mean, you give Amendinger the front row, I just don't know that that's, a, that's what the play you want to make. But maybe the right time to make that choice and see how it works for later because there's going to be a, you know, a couple of other opportunities at least. I, I think it shows you the respect for the racetrack. Yeah. The only reason you pick that is because you're terrified to be in the outside lane, that you, you don't think there's enough grip to combat the guy for the lead. So I'm going to take the bottom. It's a safer route. I'm not going to get myself in trouble rather than I've got a chance to go get the lead. It shows you the respect getting to the racetrack. So Algaier now clearly up front, Almond Digger, then Custer, then Mayer. By the way, that caution that came out for Catherine Leg, that was a water pump failure on her car. That's what put her out of the race. A couple other drivers up in here in fifth. Sage Karam right now uh, doing a great job there. Cass Grawl in the seventh spot. Connor Mosak back in ninth. So some names different than what we're accustomed to seeing up here in the top ten. A little surprised we haven't seen the 20 car of Nemechek move more forward. I thought yeah. that yesterday in practice he had a lot of speed. Hasn't really found a way to go forward. Could that, be that respect thing in his part of, you know, he's in that points battle uh, for the regular season championship. You know, just taking it easy here, working through uh, these first couple of stages maybe. 
And it's been a great weekend so far for Sand Hunt Racing. You see Sage Karam there, who has moved up into the fifth position. He felt like his race car was even better than what he qualified, so he's moving forward. And then just a few spots back, Kaz Grala qualified ninth, running an eighth. He's been good here before, but didn't get a chance to race here last year, so he drove in the Trans Am race. One, felt like that helped him coming back this year. Kaz feels like this is one of his best opportunities. Said, hey, maybe a top five is in play for us today. Yeah, two of his six top fives in the Xfinity Series have come right here, so a place that he really enjoys. And those two cars that Kevin just talked about, Sam Hunt Racing, they have an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing, so the Toyotas that are fast for Joe Gibbs are fast for Sam Hunt. And Kaz is putting it on display here. He's looking for a way around that Joe Gibbs Racing 20 of Nemechek. And let's check in on the points leader, John Hunter Nemechek went to uh, a, a tool that not everyone has. He went to Dan. Everyone's looking for road course tips. He's pretty good on the road courses, but Joe, NASCAR, a longtime successful driver, was here in a vintage car three weeks ago, and he said, yeah, I actually took some tips, especially with the re repave, to see what it was going to race like. Uh, on that first stop, they made an air pressure adjustment. He's still trying to get the car just a little bit better, more in the window, but not too bad so far. And NASCAR doesn't mind if you come to a new track or a newly repaved track if you're not in one of their cars. Can't do that, but vintage race car, DJ, you can get in one yourself and check out the new pavement. Could. <laughs> Won't. Won't. <laughs> but, but, yeah, you like that. I mean, you use every resource that you have uh, in, in trying to give yourself a better opportunity. Data. you got to have That's it. right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Listen to your dad. I was going to say, I used to get a lot of advice. I don't know that I ever put it to good use, but it was good. I just didn't use it. Uh, you watch the Sam Mayer here in that one car. Uh, Sam Mayer grew up seven miles from this racetrack, knows it very well. Tons of history here. He had a horrific crash in a Trans Am car back in, in 2020. Oh, and only 17 years old. And then he came back the next year and won a Trans Am race at this very racetrack. So those kind of things, DJ, they, although at the moment when they're happening, they just crush you because you're injured, you yeah. can't drive, etc. But when you defeat it and you and then you come back to the racetrack, that's a huge amount of motivation for this young man. Yeah, it really is. And you like to see young drivers that come back from things like that. You know, we've all experienced some things like that. You know, I had a crash in Charlotte early in my career uh, that, that you know, was devastating at that time. But then I can remember thinking back to that whenever I was finally able to win an Xfinity race at Charlotte. It was like, hey, come back here and make this happen. So I understand exactly how he feels having a great run here this afternoon. Mayor runs in fourth. You see now Almendinger's car. It appears to have been improved on that pit stop. Yeah, what a great race. I mean, again, these top three Gosh. guys going for the win. Sam Mayer, I think he's closed the gap a little bit. It's early in this run, but Sam's able to stay right with them. You can see eight laps to go at the top of our graphic in stage number one, but that's over 32 miles. It's a long way around Road America. It's like three sprint races. It really is. These are three very short runs, but there was four seconds of tire fall off in the first run. So the first lap, they ran a speed. In the 10th lap, it was four seconds slower. So that shows you how much the tires are changing. And from a driver, DJ, that means that every corner you drive it differently. Every time you go to that corner, it's different because your car doesn't make the grip that it had the last time. Yeah, and we'll have to watch here as, as these laps wind down towards the end of this stage one. Uh, Will AJ's car hang on better than it did uh, in those, that first 10 lap segment that we have? And the other side of it is, we can see Justin Allgaier, he has something that every driver wants. He has speed and longevity in that race car. That'll be hard to beat. It's a great battle here for fourth. Better exit of the corner down there by Sage Karam than it was for Sam Mayer. Mayer in the blue car battling back on the outside. Will Stage hold it down? Now John Hunter Nemechek trying to make a move on Riley Herbst. All this into turn one. Contact! That was an aggressive move by the 20 of Nemechek. Sam Mayer missed turn 14, and that allowed Sage Karam to take that spot. But John Hunter just took it. He just went and just overdrove the entry, smoke flying off the tires, made it work to get by the 98. Yeah, he just has to hope that uh, that wasn't a front tire that maybe locked up a little too much. And uh, as Matt was talking about just a little bit ago, the one thing the drivers can't do, and that's flat spot these tires. And that has lost momentum for Riley Herbst. Now he is fighting off Kaz Grala. 
big breaking zone right here. A little bit of contact, but running him high. Now, Kaz is upset. Hey, man, you didn't have to do that to me. Cole Custer getting by the 10 of Amandino for second. There's a lot happening. <laughs> yes, there is, and all at the front of the grid. On track, still 32 cars running. Actually, there's more than that. Just a couple not running at the moment, gone to the garage area. Great action up here at the front. Now Sage Karam trying to pull out a little distance from himself, from Sam Mayer, and from Nemechek, and from Herbst. Can Herbst recover? Now back to seventh. And what of Austin Hill in the 21 car? There he is, started 14th, not completely impressed with that qualifying run of his. But he wasn't, I mean, but he's gained positions now, trying to gain some more points. Yeah, he said it in the interview before the race, you know, if they can get some stage points, uh, both stages, and then get a top 10 run. Uh, he knew that his car wasn't great here this weekend, so you just have to minimize any damages as far as how many points you might lose to John Hunter Nemechek in that 20 car. Hunter Mosack and Sammy Smith, good teammate battle right there. Yeah, how about Sammy Smith has come from starting in the back towards the back and uh, driven up to 11th, possibly could get inside the top 10 before the end of stage one. Take care of those tires, Sammy. Hey, you see behind him there with the car sideways. <laughs> hey, we'll give each other a little space here. See the two car creed with some front end damage. Josh Palicki with a good run, running 14th under attack from Hemrick. Josh Palicki's doing a good job here today. Malicki in the 91, Hemrick in the 11. Remember, Hemrick, this team had to change motors, therefore had to start at the back by rule. So former champion of this series in the 11 car, Daniel Hemrick, now making his way forward. Winding down stage one, Justin Allgaier has taken control. He's chased by Custer and Almendinger. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Don't miss your chance to race for the million. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. What a power move. Enter now for your chance to win a VIP trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway. Win in Phoenix. With the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR. And home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy cannoli, look at this. It's like a science project. <laughs> Ordering lunch. Easy for you and me, but can be so difficult for a young homeowner turning into their parents. Are those all different lettuces? Uh, yes, sir. Brown rice, white rice, or quinoa. <laughs> We're gonna need a minute. Do you have any food allergies? Well, my teeth are sensitive to cold. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. That'll be 19.45. Oh, I'm just paying for my own salad. Why wait until November when Black Friday deals are going on now at Ashley? Take advantage of low monthly payments with 0% interest through July 2028, in-store only. Plus, shop doorbusters starting at just $2.99. Shop and save today, only at Ashley. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. Hey, new guy. Let's get you up to speed. Watch time. Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. To be part of something greater. Toyota. Let's go places. There are many types of turns at the Glen. And not just the seven that are paved with asphalt. Oh, There's the opportunity for a driver's first win. And the chance of payback for another. And he don't find him, I will. There's space to camp under the stars. And seats to see the ones oh, down below. There's man, machine, and a quiet track nestled in the woods, oh, ready to put on one amazing show. And it's your turn to witness it all. Watkins Glen. Get your tickets now at theglen.com. The NFL preseason kicks off in Canton.
when the New York Jets Touchdown. take on the Cleveland Browns. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. The Hall of Fame game on NBC and Peacock. It's fast. It's loud. It's a party. IndyCar Racing returns to the streets of Nashville August 6th on NBC and Peacock. It's a little louder than paddleboarding on Elkhart Lake. A little faster, too. Definitely. Welcome back to the Road America 180 from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. A beautiful setting. And it's been a beautiful race for Justin Allgaier as he's just got a few laps left in stage number one to collect valuable stage points. And also, if you win a stage, you get a playoff point, which can carry you all the way through the playoffs. Those are big. Yeah, it means a great deal also to, to have the pace to be able to drive away from Cole Custer, who's won road course races this year, Amendinger, who's been incredibly fast. This battle for 11th and 12th, and Parker taking a little bit of look at Connor Mozak, Parker in that 48 car. I know we keep talking about it, but it matters. One point matters. Riley Herps running six. He's in position to get stage points. Parker Kligerman is not right now. He's got to go get. He's got to go get by two drivers if he's going to get any stage points. And Mosak in the blue and red 19. He is not racing for the championship. He'll get those stage points if he if he earns that spot. He'll take him away from Parker, if you will, but not running for the championship like Parker is. And Parker can see them. Those two spots right there. <laughs> yeah. Those two cars. That's them. But Sammy Smith is going to be. I mean, even if he gets by Connor Mosak here, going up and passing Sammy Smith is going to be tough because he has been on a mission in this first stage and has done a great job of driving himself inside the top 10. Parker driving for Scott Borchetta and that team. Uh, first full-time ride for Parker in quite some time. Good to see it this season. It would like to put that car in the playoffs if he can. He's letting Mosak know that I'm on your tail, bud. Yeah, I thought Literally. Parker might push the issue right there, but decided to leave that move till later. Yeah, and I'm shocked we haven't had a caution. I mean, as much <laughs> chaos as we saw yesterday, uh, and, and every driver we spoke to talked about how slick this racetrack is. But now that we're into this race, and now points are going to start being paid in four laps for a stage end, you're going to start pushing it. Here's Parker Kligerman. He's getting offline, trying to make something happen with Connor Mozak. I don't think he was comfortable doing this early in the race, and now he's gained some confidence. And Parker told me before the race today, I think we're a little bit better than where we qualified. We saw where we were missing. I think the race car is going to be better. He also said, I don't think I need to make a whole lot up in that first stage or in that first stint before the first competition caution. His goal was to make up about three positions each stage, be close, maybe somewhere around top five, top eight, and then you can have a chance to get a really good result at the end. He's also in that camp that said, I expect a lot of attrition today and a lot of carnage. We've not seen that so far, but a long way to go. It's had only one car out of the race, Kevin, at this point. That's Catherine Legg's car. Kyle Sieg is back on track for RSS Racing. He had an issue earlier with his brakes. And the wounded two car of Sheldon Creed continues to make laps. Doesn't really have the speed. It doesn't look like that he's going to need to run in the top five today. Well, there's nothing beneficial about what you can see on the front of that there. So, you know, they were already struggling with their car, and then to have that damage, uh, you're just taking away speed right there. So making for a very, very difficult day. And uh, I would have to say that probably Sheldon Creed and his team, who came in here with a pretty uh, decent lead as far as uh, the being on the bubble, uh, they don't want to give away any more points than what they have to. Came in plus 49 to the cutoff line. Remember, just 12 cars, 12 drivers go to the playoffs in the Xfinity Series. 16 in Cup, just 12 here. So it's a it's a tighter group. And right now, Sheldon is in position 11. 49 points to the good as the day started. You can see behind them, there's Daniel Henrik done a nice job driving up through the field. Josh Palicki, that red and white car, that's Jeff Burton. Jeff's having a good day, so they're running 16th. That team's done a good job this year. They've, they've run the most laps 
of everybody in the series. And for a young team trying to establish themselves in this series, that's so important. And, and running well also. He's won a race earlier this year, sitting and running 16th on a road course. And, and getting laps in, it matters so much, DJ, to help build you as a solid race team rather than constantly fixing race cars. Yeah, and, and I think that's probably been something that, that Jeb has found that, hey, the more laps I get here, the better I'm becoming. And with this race team, we're not tearing stuff up so we can improve week to week. And, and you really see that here. They've got themselves into the playoffs with that win. So a lot of good things happening for this young race team and driver. Yeah, behind him, Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith, a young race car driver. He has a lot of speed. Uh, learning these road courses, not quite the experience on road courses that a lot of people that he's racing around see him racing. Oh, no, trouble right there. Something coming out of, off of the car of Chandler Hopefully Smith. Hopefully he's on a brake brakes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Chandler Smith hard into the wall, heading into turn number one. Jeff, it looks like he applied the brakes there and shattered the rotor. And that is exactly what happened. And a wise move by Chandler Smith. Yep. When that happened, I am pretty sure he turned the car left to make contact with the wall. Now, that is exceptionally difficult to do. But if he doesn't do that, he that's what the, the black wall, that's what he hits head on. Instead, he turns the car to the left, gets it into the wall, scrubs the speed off of it, and never makes head on, head on contact. You see the foam that came out of the car. That is between the driver's compartment. Good news there. Chandler Smith climbing out after scrubbing the wall, taking off the outside bodywork. I'm telling you what Jeff pointed out right there now that he's out and we see that. Watch, watch as this happens. And he realizes at this point, once this starts to happen and he's got no brakes, that what was ahead of him was not a good situation. No way of slowing this car down from this point other than what's the, the left turn right here. Scrub speed off on the wall. Oh, that's still a hard hit on the driver's side. It's exceptionally hard, and I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you make yourself do that. And, and for a young race car driver to have the wisdom to do that, see, the car doesn't drop or anything. He turns the car over there. I, I, I was questioning whether he knew to do that or not, yeah. but every indication says that that was on purpose. Just destroyed that Camaro. He's a teammate, by the way, to A.J. Allmendinger in the race today. He's already won a race. Here it is in real time. So this thing, it just explodes. He's on the brake. Tons of heat in the brake rotor. The brake rotor explodes. You hope Josh Berry didn't get any damage. And now he knows he's not stopping. Yeah, look at the speed of that car oh. at that point still. Wow. And the noise from inside the race car when that happens, it is an explosion. And it scares you to death when it first happens. It, it is, you can't, it's so loud and so violent, it's so immediate, it's impossible to, to describe what that feels and sounds like. Best news of all is that Chandler Smith hopped out of this car, the AMR safety team quickly to his aid, but we saw Chandler get out under his own power. Now he'll go get checked out by the medical officials on site. Yeah, look at the speed of that car oh. at that point still. Wow. And the noise from inside the race car when that happens, it is an explosion. And it scares you to death when it first happens. It, it is, you can't, it's so loud and so violent. It's so immediate, it's impossible to, to describe what that feels and sounds like. Best news of all is that Chandler Smith hopped out of this car, the AMR safety team, quickly to his aid. But we saw Chandler get out under his own power. Now he'll go get checked out by the medical officials on site. So Chandler Smith's car will be towed away. A few bits and pieces, but thankful that the driver is okay after this huge impact at Road America.
washing out at Road America for a big accident for Chandler Smith as the stage gets close to completion here. Stage one for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. This is what happened to Chandler coming down the front straightaway. He applies the brakes, and when he does, the brake rotor explodes. Now no braking force whatsoever, and we believe he intentionally turns the car to the left to scrub the speed off so that it doesn't go head on into the wall. Dale Jarrett, have you made that choice before when you drove? No, I, I don't know that I could have thought that fast that that's what I needed to do, you know. But but you, know, you look ahead at what was facing. I, I just admire this young man for you know what we think that we know it that that he did to avoid uh, 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 what. You know, this is all dangerous, but a much more dangerous situation because that sand would have not even slowed him out. We're talking about the fastest part of the racetrack right there, mm -hmm. the high speed that you get and uh, with no brakes. There is sand to slow the car before a tire barrier, but then it's concrete after that. And uh, I, I don't think you want to be there. You also have to wonder, you know, his teammate, A.J. Allmendinger, has been complaining about brakes. brakes yeah. And that has to be of concern for this for the tank of Amendinger. And you know, what can you do to prevent that from happening? Typically those things explode because you have the, these are long straightaways, they get cold and then they get super hot all at once. And you may want to actually put some brake to, to uh, cover the brake cooling up some. Now that seems counterintuitive to yep. make it hotter. And that's the problem. You don't really know how to prevent that from happening. So as the field comes through the final corner and up toward the start finish line. It will end stage number one. And Justin Allgaier will get those valuable stage points and that even more valuable playoff point by finishing first. Justin uh, has some this year. He's not got the most. He's only got 10 coming into today. The most is John Hunter Nemechek with 24 heading toward the playoff. So he'll be glad to add one more today. Well, John Hunter is going to finish fourth in this stage, and I think he's got he's got a very fast race car. Yeah. We not we haven't seen the end of him. And again, that battle that we keep talking about between Parker Kligerman and Riley Herbst. Riley finished sixth. Parker finishes eleventh. Riley gets points. None for Parker. And two cars: Sage Karam and Kaz Grala from Sam Hunt Racing finishing in the top ten. Kevin. So I think that gives us a good opportunity to talk to Sam Hunt. What do you make about what your Toyotas are doing so far here? And is there a, even a better opportunity to move up higher? Yeah, I think we've just been really pleased with the progress we've seen, uh, especially in our road course program. We've put a, a lot of work into it the last couple of weeks. Um, Sage and Kaz have done a phenomenal job all weekend. And um, yeah, a lot of racing left, but both of them are really happy with their with their GR Supras right now. Um, so. Just uh, happy to see progress. Thankful uh, for everybody that believes in this program. You know, I feel like I don't really deserve credit for any of this. Uh, I've just got a lot of good people here and back home that make this thing work. Sage tells me you guys have been talking for a while about trying to find an opportunity to work together. This is a pretty good first run, isn't it? What, what do you what do you make of what he's been able to bring to the program just for a couple of days? Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, I've always thought a lot of Sage. He's seemed to show in speed. Really, with anything he gets in, um, and we've been talking about an opportunity for a long time, and we were able to uh, put a unique one together this weekend, and I'm, I'm glad we did because he's um, definitely helping our program already and competing for a win today, which is uh, special. Good start for Sage Karam and Kaz Grala. Dave? Kevin, his best finish so far this year, 22nd at the street, courses, street course of Chicago. So a nice big improvement for Sage Karam. Justin Allgaier wins stage one. He's always right. All the buddies know, and he's always right. Now here comes Denny Hamlin to the inside. He runs the five wide, almost into the fence. So I'm sure he was in the right there as well. Did he have a right to be mad at you? Larson loses the lead. Hamlin's out front. Both guys wrecked themselves. I've been cost a lot of uh, good finishes uh, by him throughout my career. I didn't hit either one of them. Didn't touch him. And I know he says I race a certain way, but I don't think I've ever had to apologize to him about anything. But look at that. Wow. He is angry. Not that I'm sure he's going to say sorry after this. Yeah, yeah we're friends. <laughs> yes, this makes things awkward, but whatever. 
Cup Series racing on USA. That is tomorrow, and all that drama that we saw starting last week at Pocono, uh, it may linger. We think that it could. And you'll know starting in countdown to green, 2.30 on the USA Network. The race follows, and then, of course, the NASCAR America post-race on USA and Peacock. Uh, Tyler Reddick's on pole for that race, but guys, our bubble drivers, Bubba Wallace, who is 15th, he is fifth starting. The uh, Michael McDowell starts 18th. The one who is in a little trouble, Daniel Suarez, starts 33rd, and he went in 17th, just below the line. And, of course, A.J. Allmendinger, 18th. Racing here today, he'll start in the back. All cars will come to a stop now for pit stops. Again, a little bit different procedure here without the high-speed pit crews. Crews will have a good amount of time here to go to work on their cars. The main thing, Matt, is what do you want better if you're the driver? Absolutely, Dave, and they're all waiting for the sign from the official. He gives them the go so they can now proceed to service the race car. Everything going according to plan so far for the seven of Justin Algar. Very pleased with the pace and the feel that he has in that seven car. It started a little bit more on the tighter side than he would have preferred on this run, but overall, he likes how it's working, especially in the brake zones. Kevin? Cole Custer in the double zero says he's a little bit too free, but he's concerned about how much of a change he'll make because he doesn't want to hurt the entry to turn three. They think their car is good. Uh, if they can get up and around Allgaier, they think they might be better than him. Meanwhile, right behind him, teammate Riley Herbst is dealing with overheating brakes a little bit, really struggling to stop, so they're going to adjust the tape a little bit. Also going to go back to the way the car was before. He's dropped a couple of spots back to six. They think they can get him back up there. The way the race started, they think the car is really good and can move forward, Matt. And meanwhile, down here in the tent of A.J. Allmendinger, the guy that everybody pointed to as the person to beat coming in, especially over that run and qualifying. At this point, though, the biggest issue for the 10 is they're chasing an electrical issue, which he cannot run all of the fans that he would like to run on this 10. Had a long conversation with Chris Rice a few moments ago, and they're having to kind of rotate what they turn on on the car. Overall, balance is sort of there, but it does not have the feel and the grip that he would like. Almondinger. The biggest issue Chris Rice told me is they're trying to calm the driver down. So much high expectations coming in and all these issues so early on, Dave, as the driver a little bit sideways here in the 10. Oh, man, I can imagine. Jeff, what's he going through? What's the crew doing? Well, so because of the electrical issue, they're afraid to turn the car off because with an electrical issue, if you turn it off, it might not get started. So he, you can hear it running. So you can see what the pit crew has done. They've got fans, and they pointed them into the ductwork that blows air into the radiator so the engine won't overheat. And the brakes. And yes, the brake. Well, the brake. The brakes are certainly. You know, they're obviously not getting hotter sitting here, but just trying to get air through them. And that may have something to do with the teammate Chandler Smith having a brake issue, just trying to get heat out of them. But it's little things like this. It's not. You don't think it's a big deal, but if you roll out on a racetrack, your water tip's too high, and it never comes back down, then that can affect the way the car drives. I'm mean, sorry, the way the, the, the reliability of the engine. So, Dale, what do you think? These stops now, which have uh, a lot of time and you don't lose your place on track, as long as they stay within the max time there, uh, this is probably an advantage to him having these stops today. Well, it, it could work. We'll see exactly how this works out. You know, it's, it, what it is doing is allowing them to see if they can maybe diagnose and possibly fix the problem, because normally, under normal circumstances, they wouldn't even be dealing I mean, thinking about trying to fix this and diagnose that. Uh, you know, the time goes by pretty quickly, um, but you have high expectations coming in here. Everybody made him a huge favorite to, to win this. AJ made himself a huge favorite. You know, he his expe expectations coming here were, hey, they're going to have to come beat me. Well, so far, you know, he struggled in these uh, in this first stage to make things happen the way that he wants to. AJ works his way back up to the front where he finished. We'll work our way to a commercial and come back and get stage two started. Download the official app of NASCAR and follow the action with free live scoring in car cameras and radio broadcast. Upgrade to premium, full access to driver audio channels, and a completely ad free experience. Search NASCAR in your app store to download and start a free trial today. And you could even play. Toss the water bottle while you're on the app, I think. 
Yeah, it looks like somebody left the football at home. <laughs> Got to get creative when you're camping, right? Sure. Why not? Beautiful day at Elkhart Lakes Road America. The NASCAR Xfinity Series here for the 14th time. And Matt, it's been kind of a strange day for colleague racing on several fronts. Chris Rice, the team president, much more like running air traffic control, the different issues between A.J. Allmendinger's car, but also Chandler Smith. Let's first talk about Smith's machine. Any concern as far as the issue that he had maybe going on with Allmendinger's car? Uh, I don't think so. Um, we get those brakes pretty hot on Chandler's car, and um, just it's... It's good that we build safe race cars because that was uh, something we don't like to see at college racing. So I'm glad Chandler got out and looked like it exploded a rotor. Maybe we had a bad rotor. Maybe we had a bad batch of them. But no, I don't feel like that's a problem. We having all kinds of electrical issues with AJ's car. We had them at Sonoma and obviously we didn't get them fixed. So we got to go back to the drawing board on that. But thanks to Matt Colick for letting us use AJ Allmendinger up here. And we, we just can't conquer this place. This is one of the places that's been tough. and. Uh, but everybody at Colleg Racing, we're going to work hard to leave filter gutter protection and leave water solutions. Um, that Chevy is not going to give up. We don't give up at Colleg Racing. So just glad Channel is okay and, and uh, we can fix race cars. We can't fix drivers, you know. Okay, the SMT data showed that he was well over 170 miles an hour wow. when those issues took place for Chandler Smith. Wow, what a test with how they build these machines. Yep, here is the wreck again, Matt Yoakum. Appreciate that interview. That's where the brake rotor, Chris talked about it, shattered, Jeff. Chandler turned the car to the left to, to lessen the impact. We didn't see the car drop on the front, so we don't see any indication that the car veered to the left by itself. A bold move and a brave move to do it. Um, yes, it was. Yeah, I, I, I don't know I could have ever gotten myself there. Talk about the courage that it takes to drive these cars. It's, it's enough courage when things are going right, it, but to be able to think that quickly as we get ready to go back to green is quite amazing. Front row thinking quickly now. Stage winner Justin Allgaier in the red number seven. Cole Custer in the white Mustang to his side. Green is back out. Stage two begins. And they are packed tight heading down into turn number one. Over 170 miles per hour. Allgaier's going to have the advantage. Now the inside. It is the 10 of Allmendinger challenging Cole Custer. Allmendinger gets second. trouble. Riley Herbst is going to get spun around after contact. Oh, and more damage uh, to his car, the 43 car. Ryan Ellis came in there and hit him late. Yeah, that's the damage that could really put a hamper and a, make a bad day for Riley Herbst. He was in that battle for the final spot. That looks like Sheldon Creed with more damage to the two car. He's smoking. Yeah, the back of his car has a lot of damage to it. Quarter panels dragging the tires. That's where the smoke is coming from. Yeah, that's the drivers in 11th and 12th that we're talking about here as we talk about the playoff situation. Yeah, Riley Herb sitting stopped on the racetrack right now, trying to get it fired back up. He had contact with John Hunter Nemechek. Not sure what started it. Now we mentioned them all coming back to the start of stage two. Two by two. Oh, a lot of contact and opportunity for mistakes. As we watch those roll by, you can see that Parker Kligerman, the other person that we were talking to, sits 13th uh, right outside of the playoff. He's right there with John Hunter Nemechek as we see the 98 still not able to go. They're going to have to soon make that decision to throw the caution here. You can see the points as they run on the left. Parker would be in good shape there. Riley not so much. Still trying to get that 98 car fired. And now NASCAR, they could not hold the yellow any longer. They had to throw it. NASCAR hold, holding the caution for as long as they could to give Riley a chance to get fired back up. Here's where it started. Oh, I feel like John Hunter, I think there was some contact from behind yeah. into the back of John Hunter, and that got him up the racetrack into the side of Riley Earps. Yeah, you can see that he moved over a good half lane there, and it probably did come from that contact. Kaz Grala was right behind John Hunter Nemechek. And... <laughs> Jeff, why won't it? Oh, well, let's look at it one more time. Let's see right here. You can see. Watch John Hunter's car move right here. Oh, it looks like oh, maybe yeah, Growler got, got hit, hit too. the back end. I wonder if Growler got hit by Mayer as well. Yeah, that's very possible too. Just chain reaction. You know, that's what we see on the, uh, these road courses a lot. And the 21 car. Yeah, Austin Hill. Off in the grass. You wonder if there's any damage there. 
And there's Ryan Ellis joining the scene late in the Alpha Prime 43. Yeah, I don't think that the, the contact there would be any reason for the car not to refire uh, with that, but I think that it did create a lot of damage to the 98 that he didn't have until that contact. And Jeff, I was going to ask you, why doesn't a car refire once it's spun around and loses the end, loses the fire? It's, I, I, it could be very, it could be several reasons. It, you know, it could have created an electrical issue. It could have had a uh, connection now is loose on the battery. Uh, there are times, and I don't, I don't know why, but there's been multiple times that I've been in, in spins or works and I couldn't get it to fire back yeah. up, yeah. And, and never really understood why. Yeah, they just have a mind of their own sometimes, you know. <laughs> and as much as we want the answer immediately, it doesn't come about sometimes. Now Riley tried to get it going, he could not, and so NASCAR puts the caution out just as stage two is getting started here at Road America. Yeah, and that cost Austin Hill a ton of spots wow. also. He's all the way yeah. back to 27th. Just got off track and just had to stop, and everybody went by him. All right. The MR safety team assisting Riley Herbst. Gets him going again. Allgaier holds the lead. We'll come back and see the restart. Walking around Elkhart Lake is always a great idea, especially when you can get to Gessert's for a little ice cream. Mm. DJ, you and I have had a chance to do that before. Yeah, I think I might just go with a sundae tonight. Jeff, what would you choose there uh, by the counter there? What flavor? Uh, I was there last year, and there was uh, multiple choices. I think I went with... I think I went with vanilla. I think I was pretty calm that there, You were very vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're here at the track, here is the deal. And I think I would go for the uh, ice cream sandwich because the word giant is on it. That'd be good. Yeah, seven buck breakfast sandwich. That sounds good. Man. Ice cream sandwich yeah. for $4. And we know from experience, folks, the food here is awesome at the track. You can get your brats. You can get your fill of brats. And I even had a mac and cheese here once that was unbelievably loaded good. <laughs> so make sure you get to Road America at some point and enjoy the great racing. Under caution, pits are open. I'm sure that you would pit here unless you've got damage. We noticed uh, Sheldon Creed's car was quite damaged. This is Riley Herbst getting repairs now. Yeah, the, the, you know, frustration level is pretty high right here on the 98 car. He's done a nice job today yeah. at good speed, qualified well, doing everything he needed to do. And I didn't see he do anything wrong, did anything wrong there. Uh, and, and the people behind him didn't mean to get into him. It was just a heavy braking zone. Guys, you know, having trouble getting their car slowed down. Others running into each other. That's just what's frustrating about road course racing. Tight corners, heavy braking zones, contact is made, and you come out on the short end of the stick. Yeah, it's called restart these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, I mean, not any different than the days that we had, Jeff. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of the most frustrating things. I mean, you could, we both had situations where we ran all day and get spun out on the last lap. But, you know, this was a, you know, especially for Riley Herbst in this situation, you know, he's in a battle. And as you pointed out, doing, having a really, really good day. So now Parker Kligerman sitting here running in a spot. Yeah. Like, this is your shot. Like, you need to, you need to take advantage of this got an opportunity go execute here go make something happen and get these spots you can't control what riley herbst does and how many cars he can drive up through but what you can do is control what you can do we know he's a good road racer but it's execution time right now for parker and his team they need to take advantage of it yeah no mistakes is the biggest thing you, you, you got to be somewhat aggressive but you you have to take advantage of this situation today See, most everyone stayed out. The two of Sheldon Creed did come down pit road. Uh, Jeff, you could make repairs, or you could put on tires here. You can't fuel the car unless it is a stage break or a competition caution. Yeah, that's the key, is not being able to fuel the car. That means, you know, you probably can't go from here until the end of the race without running out of fuel. Yeah, you can see the two car here uh, with damage on the right rear. They wanted to make sure that they weren't going to get a tire. How about it, Matt? And that's exactly right, DJ. They wanted to take off that tire, try to work on the sheet metal around the wheel well opening. They felt like, judging from our video, that the tire was damaged. They're going to try to put a new one on here once they get repairs fixed on that quarter panel. But, boy, what a weekend that they've had. Second day in a row where they've had issues in the back end of the race car. Hold the nose when he checked up someone in front of him. I believe it was Nemechek. He bumper tagged him. Then that just started their day going in the wrong direction. 
Kevin Lee, how and about your side of things? Sorry, Kevin. Trying, yeah, let, let's, let's update one of the cars that was trying to point their way, and it was going to be tough for Brett Boff to be able to get that done. He was, uh, I think, 49 to the cut line coming in. Probably needs a win. Neither is going to be an opportunity today. He went to the garage before the end of the first stage, started losing power. They had worked their way up to about 12th drivetrain issue, so he's out. And that's huge. I mean, Moffitt is fast. He was two below the cut line. He needed points, and he won't get them today. We saw the big accident from Chandler Smith that brought out a caution. Matt Yoakum, we are glad to say that you have found Chandler Smith. Let's hear from him. Absolutely, Dave. Couldn't say those sentiments any stronger than what you mentioned. Chandler, first, looking at the car, the destruction has taken place. Walk us through what happened. Did the brakes go all at once, or were they working toward that? Uh, I, I wouldn't say they were working towards that. I definitely was having some brake fade throughout the runs and whatnot, but I didn't think that I was abusing them by any means like that to make them uh, fail on me. But I was going up the hill in the front stretch right I tipped over the hill. I heard something snap in half, and then I felt something come off of the car. And it's like the whole front nose just dropped when that happened. And when that happened, I was like, what in the world was that? And, and I, was, I had to keep pumping the brakes, uh, going down the straightaways anyways as it was at that point of the run. I went to pump them. And there was nothing there and I just was trying to scrub speed at that point I don't know if that was a smart thing on my end to be honest with you because there's no safety barriers there and one could argue the sand would have stopped me a softer hit or whatever but just muscle memory you lose brakes like that you want to try to scrub as much speed as you can so that's what I try to do I hate it for all my guys this quick side product Chevy Camaro we got it a little bit better there that last run so um, I hate it for my guys I hate it for all the fans here that came out and are having a good time very calm when a situation like that happens but you're not expecting it to and you don't experience it often. SMT data says you were doing almost 170 miles an hour when that took place. What went through your mind when you reached down and you didn't have any brakes? Did you ever experience something like this before? Only thing I've experienced like this was uh, when my throttle stuck. And honestly, I've experienced both now. Losing your brakes is a lot worse than having your throttle stick because you can press your big old red button, it'll cut it off. If you're fast enough, you can turn the car off and be fine. You can hit the brakes, slow down. This deal, you ain't slowing down at all. So losing brakes is a lot worse than get, having your throttle stick. But I don't know. I, it just sucks for my guys. I ain't. This car is destroyed to pieces. and stuff's a lot of money to put back together so what smart thinking though by this young man Dave to try to scrub off as much speed as he could do to lessen the impact when he did hit that safer barrier thanks Matt Jeff you talked about it it's a snap decision it, it is and he's questioning DJ whether he did the right thing and my response to him would be hey you walked out of the infield care center you yeah. did the right thing right you don't know what would have happened if you right. hadn't have done it and when you lose brakes and, and the car is rare, hardly slowing down at all, and yes, it would have slowed down through that sand pit, but still would have been a head on impact. Yeah, not much. You know, yeah, let's just think back. Remember Jimmy Johnson uh, in his Xfinity career at Watkins Glen, where he lost his brakes there, I believe it was, uh, and you know, pretty much went over the, the sand and into the barrier. And I think this barrier is maybe a little less forgiving than what that was. Young man made the Chandler Smith did the right thing here, as you pointed out. He's standing here giving us a play-by-play -play description of, of what it went through. Just admiring. But to be this young, I mean, you know, if, if, if you've been a, a veteran and been through a lot of situations like this, then you might say, okay, that's one thing. But to, to be thinking that far ahead with that, uh, just glad he's okay. And, uh, you know, it's a young man that's going to be in the playoffs and a great future ahead of him. DJ, what was your hardest hit? Uh, probably one that I don't remember. There's too many to think about. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I had an accident our first race in Kansas that um, – got turned late and, and hit the wall with the left side and it gave me a concussion that wiped out five days of my life that I don't even remember what happened. So uh, yeah, it didn't hurt physically, but I just don't remember that. Always glad when these drivers can walk away. Thanks to NASCAR for all the work on safety over the years and for all the work on speed because stage two is going to get rolling again. Justin Allgaier to the gas, but on his outside, it is A.J. Allmendinger. Allmendinger hanging tough, and he's going to go way wide. Custer and Grala will get through. Kaz Grala's red 26. 
to third place. Yeah, Dinger just, just got back, just got back in the throttle too quickly. Now he's under assault. He lost all his momentum. Looked at three wide down this back stretch. Yeah, I think AJ knew that was his chance. He needed to try to take advantage of that to get in front of Justin Algar, and it cost him dearly here. Side by side, Sage Karam on the inside in the black 24. Sam Mayer to his outside. Karam will get the advantage. Oh, and now Mayer working to his way around. He'll get a little contact from Almendinger trying to come back. Yeah, those are teammates. Two Joe Gibbs racing teammates banging into each other off turn five. Parker Kligerman getting around Sam Mayer. That will put him to sixth. Jeb Burton trying to make a move down the inside of Josh Balicki. Good racing right there by both of them. You can see the aggression levels picked up. This is a different race than what we saw at the early part portion of it. Everybody's gaining confidence in what their cars will do. And they're trying to find a limit while racing and trying to pick up spots on restarts. Yeah, I think their confidence level has gone up, too, that there's more grip out there than what they saw as they got on the track yesterday. So uh, that's allowing them to put on a heck of a race. Well, as we see someone go off here. That's John Hunter Nemechek. And that's in the kink. That's that part of the racetrack that if you miss the, miss the early part of it, you run right off course. Yeah, that's about the best that you could go off track there and come out the other side. Watch what happened here to John Hunter. Oh, he gets it wide all the way in the grass. That, that was the least amount of damage we've seen from any, from any car in the grass over there. Kept it off the barriers, continues on. Side by side for third and fourth, fifth, sixth. Sam Hunt, the owner of these two cars, is saying, OK, don't wreck. <laughs> I love you racing for third, but let's be smart here. They're trying to be smart. Parker Kligeman looking at fifth. He can't get it from Almendinger. Yeah, we talked to Sam Hunt earlier. Nothing makes an owner more nervous, Jeff Wright, than seeing your two cars battling on track. Oh, yeah. You want them to battle, but you want them to be clean, respectful. See that eight car, Josh Berry. He started in the back. He's worked himself up into the top ten. Patiently moving forward. If you're just joining us, a lot of damage in practice yesterday. Several cars went to the back. Then cars went to the back for unapproved adjustments. Then a couple of cars had to change motors for things like this. John Hunter and Nemechek off track again. So that was very mixed up at the beginning of the day. Some of the fast cars, like Josh Berry, starting in the back, and Berry now is up to eight. You have to wonder if that contact that John Hunter had with the 98 car earlier might have done a little something to the front end. He just hasn't seemed to have the handle. Because we thought what we saw in stage one, that this was a driver that's going to have to be contended with. Yeah, you see, that's turn five, where it's a heavy braking zone. If yeah. you get your right sides on the curb, it's hard to get it slowed down just completely missed the corner. And now he was right on the bumper of Jeb Burton in the 27 car, but Jeb's driving away from John Hunter. And John Hunter, at one point, we thought had a car that might could contend for this race. So, win. so I think, DJ, you're right. There was some, something's happened to this car. It's nowhere near as good as it was. Well, you probably throw in maybe not as good and a driver that's a little, maybe pressing a little bit harder now, uh, or was, until he lost these last three or four spots that he lost there. He's from Pennsylvania. Grew up racing go-karts with Marco Andretti. Yes, that Andretti family. Made his way to IndyCar. Now finding his way into stock cars and other forms of racing. Cascarala behind him from Massachusetts. He and his dad started out endurance racing together. And now Kaz is at the NASCAR Xfinity Series level. See stage two winding down, five to go here at Road America. And Justin Allgaier looking for another playoff point if he can win stage two. A chance to position himself for the race win today. Let's hear more about Sam Mayer, Matt. What an 
impressive little race Sam Mayer has put together here. Now, during the first stage, the car was just too tight. Marty Lindley felt like they maybe started the pressures too low, so it never got to exactly what Sam was looking for balance-wise. They fixed that for this stage, and so far he's been hovering right there in the middle of the top ten. But the biggest thing is that he lost a spot or two early on because he missed his marks. And drivers, they, they try to find different marks around the racetrack as far as breaking points and getting back in the gas. But he got back into his rhythm, and both for Jeff and DJ, you guys in your library of experiences through all your careers, much easier to get back into rhythm, or is it much more difficult, depending on if you're a rhythm racer? Were you guys rhythm racers? Oh, I definitely was. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't good at just going, you know, I was no Mark Martin uh, by any means. We could just any track, any time, just go fire off and go. Uh, I needed that to, to get in that rhythm. And, uh, yeah, it, it, sometimes it took a little bit of time. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think most drivers like to, to be able to get in that. My miserable qualifying record would <laughs> confirm that I was definitely a rhythm driver. <laughs> uh, the humble words of Jeff Burton. Humble but true. <laughs> Can't deny it. Justin Allgaier's in the rhythm up front. He still leads in Wisconsin. go places. Wendy's is open until midnight or later. So give in to those cravings. Get that Baconator. Give me one honk if you want a Baconator. Let me get that beep beep for six strips of bacon. Oh, there it is. When I say bacon, you say eight or bacon. Woo! Let me get a toot on the mega. All right. Uh, okay. Now, when I say... Dude. Sorry. When the craving strikes, go night mode and choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Baconator. Cool nights start with Ashley this summer with Tempur-Pedic mattresses starting at $37 per month. Beautyrest Black starting at $45 per month and Purple starting at $39 per month. Plus pay 0% interest for 60 months in store only. Only at Ashley. to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jamie. Oh, what am I up to? Just visiting a special secret client. I can't say who it is, but let's just say she bundled her dream house and her dream car for around-the-clock protection with Progressive. Oh. She has another house in Malibu. She's been an astronaut, an architect, a CEO. We're in front of her house, Jamie. Well, I'd love to tell you who her boyfriend is, but I don't think I can. I'd love to tell you, but I don't think I can. Marty, in theaters now. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity Series between winning and losing, oh! between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory I came for one thing only, baby, that's to win races. and the fumes of defeat. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series, there's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. Here we go. 30-second card is sideways. Gates down. Another 1-1 one -one sweep for Jet Lawrence. Road America, John Hunter Nemechek, the championship leader on pit lane now after an off and damage to his Toyota. And then behind him, more chaos as cars began spinning from the fluid left on the track. Yeah, you can see all the damage shift. And whenever he ran into, ripped the entire splitter off the bottom of the car, and on that brand, on that bar sits the radiator. Coming out of it. Here it is. 
Oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, we talked about yesterday as we watched Ryan Sieg just get off that the damage just, you don't have to hit a wall. Just getting off the course and what damage you could get. And then, of course, we see all the oil you can see right there. And then drivers behind you, you can see Austin Hill's going to come by here. Riley Herbst is going to spin out. And Riley had gained, Riley had gotten all the way back up to ET from starting in the back. And now gave it all up again. Watch this right here. Off course, wow. digs in and just rips the entire splitter bar off of it. And with it, all of the cooling for the engine. Oh, that is a hard hit as well. I mean, not just the damage to the car, but for John Hunter, that is a huge hit. I mean, what's that feel like, Jeff? It almost... It's a jarring bolt. Oh yeah, those those tight those types of wrecks actually hurt a great deal, and and you're not expecting them. That's the thing. Like when you know you're going to hit the wall, you brace yourself. Those you don't know is coming. You're still holding on to the wheel, and it just digs in. Track cleanup continuing now. That is that is just it's something that we saw yesterday. Several cars ran off track. It ripped the left front fenders off of them, ripped the splitter bars off, but that one is by far the worst. And right before that, we saw Austin Hill making up spots on track and the deficit that he had to John Hunter Nemechek. Again, uh, top two in the championship was, was decreasing. And then all this happened to John Hunter and Hill is still out there running. Well, and the question is, can they get this track cleaned up? Yeah, with three to go in this stage, can they get it cleaned up in time to drop the green flag? It's a very long racetrack, and it takes forever to get around. They're just coming into turn 12 now, 14-turn course, so they'll be coming to the start-finish line, you know, in about a minute, and that'll be two to go, so they'll have to clean it up within that lap to be able to drop the, the green flag with one to go. Don't know if they'll be able to make that or not. more action on track right before the caution here's aj racing with sam mayer that's in turn one same thing that happened on the restart very similar to what happened on the restart aj's car just isn't there today and, no. and it just doesn't have the speed now they've lined him back up in front of the one car and in front of the 48 car so the what tells me is that he had passed the scoring loop and then the caution came out yeah it just seems that they do have some brake issues going on that they just can't attack the way that they, their drivers want to. The damage car of John Hunter Nemechek now in the garage area and done for the day because of this wild ride coming out of turn 13. The first name on the winner's trophy at Road America will be Carl Edwards. Reed Sorensen. Nelson Piquet wrapping himself in the Brazilian flag. AJ Allmendinger at Road America. Yeah! Is Brendan gone? Paul Menard is going to win at Road America. Michael McDowell, the winner today. Unbelievable finish. Jeremy Clements has made it. Heck of a job, boys. There's your Road America winner, Justin Allgaier. Christopher Bell. Austin Cindric of Team Penske. Kyle Busch wins at Road America. Ty Gibbs pulling away from Kyle Larson. <laughs> 13 Xfinity races at Road America. 13 different winners. There are a couple of drivers running up front in position to spoil that. Justin Allgaier running first. AJ Allmendinger running fifth. We'll see if they can be 14 for 14 at Road America. So glad you could join us this afternoon. Dave Burns, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett in the booth. Kevin Lee, Matt Yoakum tracking down everything on pit road. The cars are under their fourth caution of the day for a big wreck by John Hunter Nemechek off track and through the grass, tore that car apart, and then others got involved from the fluid laid on the track. And this has implications as we look at the points as they run that cut line there, remember 12 drivers go to the playoffs. 
looking very interesting. That regular season championship last week, John Hunter Nemechek lost 20 points in Pocono. Uh, he came into that race 33 points ahead, left 13 points ahead, and now clearly out of the race at Austin Hill, still on racetrack. Could be another big loss for him. Yeah, he could definitely lose the points, but probably will lose the points lead. Here's the wreck again for Nemechek. And remember, Nemechek and Hill, they're both comfortably to the playoffs, but the regular season championship is worth a bunch. First to second is a difference of five playoff points, so it's very significant. So that driver is with Kevin Lee now. He is. It was adventurous. It was going really well. Um, what were the different issues? Was there a mechanical issue that led you to that final off? Uh, I think... I just made a mistake, I guess, and it kind of went straight, um, jumped the access road. Uh, our guys brought a really fast Mobile One Toyota GR Super today. Uh, the long run where it's as fast as the Xfinity 10G, but uh, just frustrating on restarts getting used up. Um, who needs enemies when you have teammates? Okay, thank you, John Hunter. Well then, uh, I'm looking on the board here. I'm not sure where he restarted. Connor Mosak is his teammate this weekend, as is Sammy Smith. We'll try to find that as the field chooses which line they want to restart in. Going to either side of the choose line and coming back to the green flag. Unhappy John Hunter Nemechek. Definitely that. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to have a one-lap shootout here. NASCAR, stage yep, the AMR safety team got the track cleaned up. NASCAR is going to go one lap here to the end of stage number two. Who's going to get the playoff point? Justin Allgaier says, I want it. He's on the gas in the seven car. And Cole Custer had been able to kind of hang back a little bit in these others and slide in behind the leader. And it looks like he's going to come out in second there. But it, for a minute, it looked like that Sage Karam wasn't going to have any of that. Top 10 will receive stage points. So keep your eye on the battle for 10th back there. If you're in 11th, you want to get by. You want a point. Allgaier cleanly out front now with a run down to turn five. Yeah, Justin Allgaier's just been the class of the field here today. He's, as said, we, he's had the speed uh, as you get started, uh, and then uh, his car really hangs on well. So he's done everything right, uh, hasn't made a wrong move, move up to this point. Parker Kligerman lost a few spots right there on this restart. Out of turn five, I think it was, Jeff. Yeah, he's had some trouble, and two of them got by him, so now he's back in 10th spot. Daniel Hemrick trying to take another spot from him. Kligerman getting a little aggressive on Sammy Smith in that maroon and silver 18. Yeah, it's point being very valuable. In position to get two points is Kligerman. If he can get by Smith, he gets three. He's got a good run coming down here. Kligerman to the outside. Smith trying to protect on the inside. Wiggles the 18 car. Will the 48 have enough momentum on the outside? Good racing off of Cannon Corner. Yeah, I don't know if momentum or track was enough. He needed asphalt there for a second, but uh, it does make that pass. Parker Kligerman by Sammy Smith trying to hang on as now Daniel Hemrick will try to get by him. Oh, Daniel got high off the of turn 14. Car never turned. Lost a lot of spots. And stage win number two on the day to Justin Allgaier. That's his seventh stage win of 2023. Here is the battle further back. And Hemrick falling back. Yeah, just how much damage might he have to that car now? Wow, that was not great for Hemrick. That was good for Kligerman. And of course, very good for Justin Allgaier, his second stage win. Things are getting aggressive. <laughs> yes, they you can are. see as this race has gone on, how different the restarts are looking. Drivers are trying to get all they can, have gained confidence in this track. And I think the track's probably gotten better as well. As the cars have gone through there at the corner side by side, they're putting rubber on the racetrack where they don't normally have it. And I think that's making 
this newer asphalt more comfortable for the drivers in those braking zones that they talked about yesterday not having any grip. Yeah, they're gaining confidence and losing patience at the same time. So that's a combination that's fun to watch. I don't know. Is that why we're having more cautions? I think it is. <laughs> And Justin Allgaier is trying to uh, ruin the odds makers days and uh, not go 14 for 14 on different winners here. He's trying to be the only multiple winner ever in the Xfinity Series of Road America. Stage two complete. We'll come back for the final stage in a moment. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Beautiful shots of Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, home to Road America. And lots of other good stuff. If you like hanging out in Wisconsin in the summer. About halfway between Milwaukee and Green Bay. And stage two is over. Justin Allgaier has won his seventh stage of the season. He has swept them so far today. And now the unique pit stops here. A little relaxed, Matt, but another good chance to work on your race car. Absolutely. All the cars hitting their pit boxes, the crew members up on the wall, waiting for the NASCAR officials to give them the go sign so they don't get any penalty, jumping too soon while cars are still rolling in here. You look at Justin Allgaier, and Dave, you mentioned two stage wins today. He's going to try to pull off the trifecta and score the trophy, but the biggest thing that he told me this weekend is it's all in the details. The small things really turn into huge uh, momentum getters on the racetrack, and that's exactly what he did on the track walk. He walked around this new pavement, the landscape, looked at how they put the pavement up to the curbing, and he also told me that he felt like that has made it much more crucial to hit your marks because the curbing, which is much more like a bumper or a cushion, it's not like it used to be. It's very level with the pavement, so it's almost like an extra uh, portion of area that you can use for grip and to try to run off the racetrack. But the car tighter, Kevin, on this run, but he's still very pleased with the overall balance of the seven. Well, Cole Custer in the double zero Haas Automation Ford is still in play for his third straight road course win. Pitting again from second. He still wants to find a little bit more through the carousel. Says that's where he's losing. So they're going to go back on the changes they made at the last stop and see if they can help him a little bit better with drive off through there. He has talked about how treacherous this is and he's really been concerned about when you get offline can you be able to make it stick but that's what it's going to take to be able to get around Justin Allgaier Matt and Kevin Allgaier's day is just taking a turn for the worse it seems like every stage every situation that they've tried to work on and the officials are giving all the teams the two-minute warning that Everything that they've tried to fix in this race car, it's actually gone the opposite way and made it worse. The tires they're taking off, those Goodyear's on the right side, you can see that Almendinger has donuts going down the quarter panel. Also, they have worn off the Goodyear on the right front of that gen machine. You can see, remember, back inside, electrical issues continue for this 10 car. They're not shutting it off. Too concerned, Kevin, that it won't refire. But what, add in one more issue, more brake fade for Almendinger. You can just hear the disappointment in his voice. Two stages done, and the good day continues for the Sam Hunt Racing Toyota. Sage Karam in third. Kaz Grala lost a couple of spots on that restart in sixth. I heard Kaz say before the last restart, it, I don't think we're quite good enough to have anything for all guy or Custer, but we are pretty good, and we can stay up here. As you might expect, the cars are good. No changes for either. Third and sixth. Third, by the way, is the best ever finish for Sam Hunt Racing. Sage Karam's best ever finish in Xfinity is fifth. Matt. Still working on that kind of Almendinger car for beginning to pull off the road. More brake fluid for Almendinger. And it's not just the 10 car we mentioned earlier. Chandler Smith, his teammate, he had brake failure in the fastest section of this racetrack. Still trying to tweak the 10 here to get him back out. But boy, everybody earmarked the 10 as the car to beat. He was going to be the class of the field. And it's been anything but that today. They certainly have struggled, Dave. And now buttoning up things for Almendinger so he can rejoin in proper time. All kinds of issues today. Can he overcome them? He was uh, one of the odds-on favorites coming into today. 
but it's been a struggle. Getting ready to start the final stage of the race. Justin Allgaier trying to make it a clean sweep. See if he can get to the checkers first. Raceway. There's the schedule. It starts with Countdown to Green at 2.30 on USA. Continues with awesome racing from that great track. And then finishes up with NASCAR America Post Race on USA and Peacock. And it is getting dicey as just five races remain to the playoffs for the Cup Series. The points are tight. The cut line is interesting and qualifying. Good for some, not so great for others yesterday. Yeah, Rich, Rich was a great racetrack. Tons of tons of action, a lot of side-by-side -side battles. Uh, short practice today. Christopher Bell, I feel like all the Toyotas had a lot of speed today. Uh, tons of speed. Kyle Busch was fast. William Byron was fast. Gonna be, see an exceptionally competitive race tomorrow. That'll be 2.30 Eastern on the USA Network. Make sure you check it out. AJ Allmendinger, you see him in 17th. He didn't practice a bit because he's right here, so he's gonna have to start in the back. Never sat in that car at this racetrack. Gonna see what he can make happen. Hey, if you wanna rep your favorite driver and take advantage of amazing deals at the NASCAR shop, check it out by going to nascar.com slash shop today. Great selection of t-shirts, hats, die cats, everything you need to support your driver. All right, coming to the choose and to the restart with 10 laps to go. That's still over 40 miles, long laps here on the road course in central Wisconsin. Dale Jarrett, I think a lot could happen between now and then. Well, I think a lot's gonna happen. Uh, big thing is, did anybody have enough adjustments that they could make to try to handle Justin Allgaier here? Um, yeah, again, his car just fires off really good. Um, watch the choose here. Of course, Cole Custer is going to start beside him and do what he can. But could anybody make any adjustments or have enough here in this last stage, in these last 10 laps? And there's something emotionally, Dave, when you hear 10 to go as a driver, it's go time. And even though it's a long racetrack and it's a long 10 laps, it is go time right now. You're going to see a ton of pushing right here. That less patience and more aggression maybe we've been talking about? DJ described it. <laughs> Front row, Custer and Allgaier. Second row, Sage Karam, A.J. Allmendinger coming toward the start. Finish line, the green will be displayed. Allgaier has control of the field. He fires off first. Protecting the inside. He knew Karam would take a look. Still protecting that inside is Allgaier. Custer way wide. That's allowed. Sage Carroll to take over second place. Sam Mayer into third place. Yeah, we saw the same thing happen to A.J. Allmendinger in the last restart. Uh, lost four or five spots, got himself in a really bad position there. See how Cole Custer can rebound from this. Can he rebound from this? Custer now back to the fifth position and being challenged right there. Now he's going to try to get fourth back from Kaz Grala. Dinger battling brake and electrical issues in that 10 car. Trying to grab a trophy today before he heads to Richmond Raceway for tomorrow's cup action. Sammy Smith, a move on Grala. The 18 car is through. See Josh Berry up in the mix here. We haven't talked about him much today, but he's got himself solidly inside the top 10. Parker Clickerman trying to make a move to go forward. Oh, that's a late move by Josh Berry. Grala nearly cuts him off, doesn't do it. Now they're side by side. Now, Grala's probably not going to be very nice in, <laughs> in return. Already got some 
damage on the front of that Toyota. You hear the tires begging for grip through the kink, one of the fastest parts of the racetrack. They all make it. Parker Kligerman now challenging Kaz Grala. Kligerman going for that eight spot. Kaz Grala, that red car right there, the 26 car, is, he does not have the speed he had earlier on a, on a restart. This time he's gone backwards. He's mostly gone forwards on restarts, but not this one. That's a battle for second. Sam Mayer now in the one car for Junior Motorsports. Trying to get past Sage Karam in that 24. Yeah, careful now. Yeah. Yeah. The are on the both of them. Can he make it three wide? Sam Mayer with a big block to keep it from happening. They got side by side and Custer tried to take advantage. Couldn't do it. Mayer is through to second. Teammates now running one, two. Custer realizes he can't waste much time right here with Sam Mayer. He's going to have to make this move to get to that second spot as quickly as he can if he's got any chance of running down Justin Allgaier. Allgaier is trying to skate away here with only eight laps remaining. Oh, late breaking move here by Custer. Yeah, contact's good. Oh, they, they, how they miss contact there, I don't know. Great move by Sam Mayer not to turn down into him. Now Custer back underneath him again. Sam Mayer again giving him enough room to keep from having contact. Now Custer's forced to block the inside from the 24 of Karam. Here comes Karam trying to come back through. He is our Toyota driver update. Maybe it'll be for a pass right here. No, he can't get anything done. Give Sage Karam a ton of credit right here. Sage is a very aggressive race car driver, but he's been very smart. He could have easily gotten into the back of the double zero right there and turned him around. He didn't do it. Racing with a ton of respect. Kevin Karam's having a great day. And that's one of the things that he told me he thought could be an advantage is his race craft. He said, I'm not sure my single pace lap is right there yet, but I've got a lot of experience and I think we might be uh, able to take advantage of that at road courses a little later in. He is in a position maybe to be able to win a race for the first time in a single seater since his Indy Lights Championship year in 2013. He's from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. By the way, whatever racing uh, name is from Nazareth, it's the Andretti name. And his dad, Jody, was Michael's trainer. That's kind of how they got into the sport. He uh, started going along to the go-kart track with Marco. So that relationship goes way back to Nazareth, Pennsylvania, Matt. Kevin, Josh Berry has certainly put in extra effort trying to check all the boxes, knowing moving to Cup Series next year, you can't give up anything in any different area. He didn't grow up a road racer, didn't grow up racing carts. He's had to work in that area with all the extra effort and the tools at his disposal. Yes, he was third here a year ago, but he will quick to tell you that that effort is really starting to slowly pay off. But the biggest change for today, they made a significant air pressure and chassis adjustment back at the beginning of stage two, and the car has simply come to life. Trouble on the racetrack. That's Alex LeBay, window net down, indicating that he's okay, but after a hard, hard hit. And that is going into turn one. This has an interesting look to it. Remember earlier today, Chandler Smith tried to avoid going across the sand trap, and you can see LeBay needs to lay down and into the barrier. That's the route that the 08 took. See a lot of debris through the grass. AMR safety team quickly. Certainly hope Alex is okay. Rushing to get to LeBay. Jonah Cree with also damage. He's got a right rear flat, too. It's been a rough day for the two car, but nothing like what just happened to LeBay. Shaking his head, walking it off. Ugh. So here he is heading toward turn one, the last car in frame now. Boy, that looks similar to what happened to Smith. Yeah, clearly a mechanical issue. And that's that wall we talked about that, say, that Chandler Smith was trying to avoid. Alex Abay just a head-on impact. 
clearly a mechanical issue, but his car has a different, what was different from he and Chandler Smith. Chandler's car, when he had the problem, it continued straight until he turned it. In this case, it looks like it, whatever happened, and then the car took a right, quickly turned to the right. There are tire packs that slow that impact a little bit, but the concrete is right there, and you can see the fencing above it. They've had cars go out of the park here over the years. This track has been here since 1955, largely unchanged in its configuration. Safety is always a concern. You see the tire mark. So remember Chandler's car, there was no tire marks, there was nothing. But this car, when whatever happened, it hangs a right and it goes straight into that inside wall and then careens off of that into the turn one wall. So problems in the same place, but a, a, a completely different result based on whatever happened to the car and it just turning right. And Chandler questioned whether he had done the right thing. I mean, when he sees this, he's probably gonna think heading off to the left and scraping off the left side of that car was the right move. Yeah, if he needed anything else besides the fact that he was standing there giving that interview and, and being perfectly fine, uh, this certainly validates exactly what he did was the right thing. So it's a tough day for SS Greenlight Racing. Catherine Legg out with a mechanical issue and now this for her teammate, Alex LeBay. So under caution for the sixth time today. Three of those were for breaks from NASCAR, a competition caution and a couple of stage breaks. And Justin Allgaier has won both stages. Matt, what's their team thinking about? And that seven car certainly has been stellar today. And Jim Pullman, looking at the way this day has gone, it, almost like you've written the script for it. If you had a concern here for the run to the finish, what would it be? Well, obviously brake rotors, right? I think everybody's having issues here. Um, our Brembo stuff's been really good all day, so hopefully it hangs on to the end. Um, man, this car's been really strong. The, the brand Chevrolet has been really good. Really proud of Justin, really proud of all these guys. You know, they say if you grow up in Chicago, you've got to be a Bulls fan or a Cubs or a White Sox fan or Blackhawks. For you, you were always a racing fan, bitten by the bug early. You never Barely missed scoring a win at your home track. You told me this is sort of like your home track. What would a win be for you, yeah. Road America? Yeah, I mean, it would mean a lot. I mean, not far from home. Uh, lots of family, lots of friends here. Got uh, all the brand people here on the box with us, so cheering us on. That's a lot of fun. But, yeah, if, if we can't win at Chicago, I'll, tell, I'll take out Cart Lake. Certainly a trophy is a trophy, but it means a whole lot more if it's near your home where you grew up. And it would be big for Pullman, his driver, Justin Allgaier, trying to become the first repeat winner in the Xfinity Series here. Great times in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, whether you're on the water or you're at the racetrack. Had a little tubing there, why not? Yeah, they might want to head in and turn the TV on, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it has been great, and it's going to get great for the end of this race. It has been wild out there today. We've had some big hits, Jeff. Yeah, we really have. It started with Chandler Smith right here on the brakes. Brake rotor explodes, going straight. He turns the car to the left to get into the wall to scrub the, the speed down into the car to keep from hitting head on to the wall we just saw. And John Hunter Nemechek uh, gets off the track. Had no idea, but we've been seeing this, uh, that once you get off, you can get a lot of damage. Just destroys his car. He's out, probably losing his points lead here today. Had the most points to start, but this is Alex LeBay. Mechanical issue here. He goes to the right and then straight into the barrier. It's a huge hit for Alex LeBay. You see the wind and that immediately, immediately down. I didn't know the safety workers that wasn't in dire need of help. So six laps to go, just over 25 miles, 24 miles or so. And this is the playoff standing list grid as it stands right now. Most affected, perhaps, right around the cut line. Creed in the two, Herbs in the 98, and Kligerman in the 48. Yeah, it seems like every time we showed the two car today, he's in some kind of trouble. He's had a lot of damage to his car. He's on pit road now trying to get it fixed. 
Browning, Irvis, Parker, Klingerman, they, they just had this incredible battle. Parker's done a nice job of getting himself in position, but don't count out Riley Herbs. He's come from the back now twice, and he's up to 16th, and he's got a fast car. He can still move forward some. And DJ, you pointed this out before, those playoff points on the upper right there, uh, none for Nemechek today. Hill has a chance if he can win the race, and he's gaining. Yeah, he sure is, and, and you look at Justin Allgaier, too, He's, you know, you talk about the playoff points. He's got two stage wins. Uh, he could get, if he can keep battling here and get that win, he's going to add five more to that total. So it uh, could be a huge day for him. Cole Custer's done a nice job here, and he's going to have something to say about this on this restart, too. Again, seven races to go until the playoffs start for the Xfinity Series. It's a little bit different than it is for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs for these drivers and teams. We'll start yeah. just a little bit later. That, of course, will all begin at Bristol on a Friday night. We're, we're coming, you know, this race is winding down, and we've seen some big instant impacts, some big wrecks. Sam Mayer, the driver looking for that win in the Xfinity Series, trying to establish himself. You know, last week, he kind of questioned himself. Did he make the right move? Did he mess a teammate up? I didn't think he made the wrong move at all. I thought he made the move to give himself a chance to win a race. And so now here he is with a chance to win, and his teammate is sitting there. And I know that Sam Mayer wants to be respectful. I, I know that that's how he wants to do it. I know, I know that Junior's been talking to him about being respectful to teammates and how to finish races, but here you are. They're gonna drop the green with four to go. And you have got to go be aggressive if you're gonna win the race. So it's a tough situation, DJ, for a young driver or an experienced driver. How hard do you push and what are you willing to do with a teammate alongside you? And is there extra incentive since he grew up seven miles from here? Would be for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, you throw all of that in there. I mean, just getting the first win of your career is big enough. But but doing it right here and in this moment, um, you know, there's a lot of things going through a young man's head right now as to what is the right thing to do. And he's won races here. He's won them in Trans Am Series. He had a big wreck here a few years ago, overcame it, came back the next year, won the race. This is a place that he knows how to win, and it's it's a huge deal to win in one of these national touring series like the Xfinity Series. It's a big deal. Sam Mayer is going to have to push the buttons here to make something happen. And Sam Mayer will be getting a lot of pressure from the third-place car of Cole Custer, Kevin. Yeah, looking for three in a row on the road course. Jonathan Tony is the crew chief, so does he have something to pick up a spot, maybe two? Oh, absolutely. You know, this. these are the moments you live for. It's what you, while we work on these things and get them ready to come to racetrack is to put our man in a position. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd bet on him. I wouldn't bet against him for sure. So, yeah, I think, uh, see what happens, hope we can get clear of him and uh, get out here and get us a win. Cole's been pretty honest about how difficult it is when you get out of the groove. That what you've been saying during the race today is you feel a little more comfortable in the passing zones. I think it's gotten a little bit better as the races went on, as things have got rubbered up and seasoned in, you know. But uh, yeah, you still don't want to be on the outside into turn one. That's not the preferred place to be. So, uh, so we'll see how it shakes out. And uh, like I say, hopefully we can get us a win. All right, we'll all watch together. Thanks, Jonathan. Kevin, let's look at some highlights for Cole Custer. Two of the last three road courses have been his. This is Portland. That one, they just back out of his way. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, Want to win this? Yeah, one? go ahead and take this one. Cole. And then the streets of Chicago. He had the best car. He led all the way until the stoppage for weather, and then the cancellation for weather. Cole ruled the day. Sat on the pole and let every lap. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting right here as to where is he going to line up because Sam Mayer is going to have the choice. Is he going to go beside of Justin Allgaier or is he going to go behind him? Hmm. <laughs> And where do you go for NASCAR tracks? Well, how about another NASCAR app? NASCAR tracks is the official app, and you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all over the country where NASCAR races. So search tracks, NASCAR tracks in the app store and download for free. Start using it. Maybe it would show you where to choose if you're <laughs> Cole Custer or Sam Mayer. Well, with Sam Mayer, I'd have to say that the last two, I've seen A.J. Allmanier and Cole Custer both get way off track trying to stay up with Justin Allgaier down in turn one on these restarts. So, uh, yeah. You, you would choose behind him then? No, I wouldn't. 
I just have to. I just got to think that I'm going to be smarter when I get down there. I can get this done. That and that <laughs> and that is where a guy like Marty Lindley, the crew chief on the one car, he's a he's he drove race cars himself. His father, a legendary racer, yeah. unbelievable talent. That's where he, Marty Lindley, can be talking to Sam Mayer right here and saying, hey, man, we've seen this in turn one. Let's take advantage. Let's, if we decide to line up alongside him, giving him all that information, DJ, that you just spoke about. And that's what young drivers need. They need some experience on the box. They need experience in the spotter stand to relay that information. It just helps so much in the preparation getting into turn one. Yeah, you have to you want to make sure that when you leave turn one that the worst that you are is in second spot he lined up behind you <laughs> there you go and, and hey look and maybe that is also some senior leadership saying we yep. have seen it not sure. work on the outside let's don't make the same mistake but let's all be in this decision together if we're all in it together and it works out great if it doesn't work out we all made the decision along each other. But you've given Cole Custer the opportunity here to learn from his mistake the time before and try to stay side by side with Justin Allgaier. I was going to say, don't give Cole Custer too much information. Don't pile it on because he will use it. Can Custer in the white Mustang challenge Justin Allgaier in the bright red Chevrolet down into turn number one? Allgaier gets the jump. Sam Mayer, his teammate right behind him. He's giving it a peek there. Which way does Allgaier block? He goes to the outside. He gets them both. All right, so Sam Mayer, they made that decision to take the inside, and he came out in second. Great choice. Sage Karam now challenging to the inside of Cole Custer, the black car, trying to get around the white car. And right behind them, Almondinger and Sammy Smith. Yeah, and you know, most races in this situation, we'd be saying, watch this 10 car. Uh, AJ Almondinger can make this happen, but just don't believe he has the car to do it today. Whoa! Josh Berry trying to make a move on Sammy Smith. Smith gets into Almendinger, and now he does not have the car at all. Caution is out at Road America. Oh, tons of damage. Sammy Smith, wrong place, wrong time. Cole Custer, same thing. Seventh caution of the day as they are racing toward the finish at Road America. It looked like the eight car got off course. Yeah and then was in the grass. Look at the rear end. It's not the, there's a bar that runs from the chassis to the rear end, and it has gotten broken off. So the double zero is done. 10 looks done, 18 damage. He may, no, I don't think so. No, he's Put done. Put the window net down, he's done. Very, very costly. And you drivers have seen this and maybe experienced it. You get offline, you get on that grass just a little bit, or even on the paint. You can lose all your control at that point. Let's take a look and see what happened with Josh Berry. You can see Josh Berry, the silver car, right there. Some kind of problem. Or did he have contact from Brown? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if he had contact or if there's something happened with the braking. I don't know. I thought he was in the grass, but he wasn't. Yeah. No. Could have just been. Yeah, see, I think, I, I don't know. Maybe he did drop the left rear off into Good. the grass, and that started this. It happened so quickly. And all these guys, Boom. there's nothing they could do. That's what happened to Custer's car there. Sammy yeah. Smith with big contact into him. Yes, yeah, so all of this, they were battling for fifth. Cole Custer's running third and gets taken out. That's Here you go. This is a great look at it. Let's watch and see. It starts before yeah, he, 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 he didn't grass. get off. I saw something fly, fly out oh, from yeah, underneath I did the too. car. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if it's something that he ran over or if it was something that came off of the eight car. A couple of drivers have had brake issues today. We've seen some massive wrecks from that. But this all started when the eight car of Josh Berry got squirrely heading down one of the fastest parts of the track. Cole Custer's double zero collected and all that. Yeah, so frustrating for Cole Custer, but Cole is showing the industry that he is a cup caliber driver. He has been moved back into the Xfinity Series, did not have the success that we all thought he would have in three years in cup. 
So he's moved back to the Xfinity and he's showing everybody, hey, I can win races. I just need to be in the right opportunity. You always wonder how young drivers, you know, we think about Cole Custer because he got moved. You know, he was in the Xfinity Series, did so well, got moved up. He's still a young man, I think 25 years old, so still very young and, and a lot of years ahead of him. How do they handle situations like this uh, with their mindset, you know? But he has come back. He understands that he, you know, the, everything that took place and things happened for a reason. Um, yeah, I, I went through a similar situation uh, in my career where um, got moved back to the um, Bush Series at the time, the Xfinity Series, and, and got my way back uh, to that. And I think this is a young man that can do exactly that. You're, you're right, Jeff. He's doing all the things that owners want to see drivers get through and, and make uh, good choices and show the talents that they have. And not only did you get back, you got back and a, a Hall of Fame driver and a champion. So it's so difficult when you're in the heat of the battle and things aren't going your way, but you're a great example of how you don't quit. You keep moving. Martin Truex Jr., look at him. Yes. Look at how many races yep. he's won later in his career. He got hot, and he's been the best driver in the, in the series for a while in the cup level. So if you have talent and you, can, uh, and you are afforded the patience and, and the opportunity, you can have success. Cole Custer hobbles the double zero back to pit road. Let's go down to Matt. And Dave, uh, some conversation back and forth between Taylor Moyers and Josh Berry. Josh was saying that he did indeed get hit from behind. So contact is what he believes forced him off and started that entire uh, melee there, Kevin. Sage Karam also was in the middle of that, up into third right now. I heard Sage radio in and say, I don't know how we missed that. As I saw the replay, it looked like it could not have been any closer, but the team has taken a look and said no damage. Let's take a look on that number 24, Sam Hunt Racing Carousel Online Toyota as he comes through just trying to miss everything. He's actually up ahead of that, but then as the 18 is sliding back by, how close do you like it? Wow, grazed, maybe, but clear, and Sage Karam, remember, this is a full one-off. This is the only race with this team, but he will be back in the Alpha Prime car in a couple of weeks at Indianapolis on the road course. Now, Kevin, you can't deny he's making the most of it. What a save, yeah. what a move by Karam to miss all that. Now, we've had the update from Matt on the contact that Josh Berry claims. So let's take one more look at it. Heading down into turn number five, the eight car gets squirrely, and the question is, uh, did he get that contact from Kaz Growl? He says he got bumped. Yeah, it's just so hard to tell right here. You can see he's kind of closing there. I, I'm sure that Josh Berry maybe he was having to lift just a little, not to get uh, into Almendinger right there, too. Could have been contact. We just don't have a good enough shot to, to be able to save definitively that that's exactly what happened. Well, it's what Josh believes. Yeah, so sure. There you go. He's the driver behind the wheel of the eight. So Barry continues on. Sage Karam continues on from this narrow miss that Kevin just described in the 24. Wow. But a couple of really good race cars taken out right here. Yeah, and this lineup of how NASCAR puts them in the position is going to be very important for this restart. You know, we're down to, you know, we're down to three to go right now. And Riley Herbst, who we keep talking about, he, that he right now, he scored an 11th. Now, we don't know this is the final lockdown position because NASCAR takes a few minutes to get everybody lined up correctly. Parker Kligerman up to fifth. Uh, but Riley Herbst, he keeps climbing himself up through the field. This is the second time. That caution was actually beneficial to him. He yes. was able to get by some cars rather than being in the caution. Still under caution. It'll be two to go this time by. Let's see if we move into the overtime area here. Looks like we may because the lights are still on on top of the pace car. Hey, we've talked about Marty Lindley, the veteran crew chief for this driver, Sam Mayer. Matt's got up with him. And on top of the pit box. And Marty, when you look at what this team has done and this driver has done today, what impresses you most about Sam's uh, prolific run behind the wheel? Very old school, but also very old soul-like. 
Yeah, you know, we had a little bit of issue in stage one, had some break issues, and for him to stay in the game and be able to battle back and get us up in the top five with a chance to win this race at the end, you know, our teammates have been lights out all day. I just appreciate everybody at Chevrolet, Accelerate. This is a home team for um, for Sam, home race, and hopefully uh, we can come home with a 1-2 junior motor motorsports finish. You know, you talk about the emotions behind the wheel, and you're battling your teammate for the W here. You've been in that position before. Coming into this race, did you guys talk about the past experiences and how you try to compartmentalize who you're racing when it's at the finish? Yeah, it's been a, you know, it's been a tough situation for Junior Motorsports over the years. You know, I feel like there's been some issues there. It's been a lot of emphasis put on, you know, finishing these races out and, and getting the finishes we deserve. And hopefully they put on a good show for the fans what they do all right good luck here with the run to the finish dave it's gonna get exciting matt thanks uh here is uh jeff you want to make a comment yeah i, I do I, i'm a huge fan of marty lindley marty uh you know i mentioned if for those of you who don't know check out do a little research on his dad butch lindley yeah. butch lindley is a legend and an unbelievable racer and and marty is the same way my son harrison worked with marty i got a chance to really get an up close look at him he is a hardcore racer and very smart he's a he's a new hire into junior motorsports as a crew chief he's been in trucks he's been in k and n uh, and he's won in everything he's done uh, he is an extremely talented crew chief as well as he was a driver let me give you another father-son connection sam mayer's dad scott is actually a racer too and he won here at Road America in the Grand Am Series. Here's Scott. Little BMW power behind the eight car. And so, it, you know, as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. When Sam was young, there is Scott with his co-driver, Brendan Hartley, who, by the way, is a bad man behind the wheel. Uh, they built a go-kart track in their backyard, and this is where Sam began racing before he ever got to this level in the Xfinity Series. Practice in the backyard, take it to the track. We've been watching Parker Kligerman most of the day. Kevin, he's in the best spot he's been all day. So when I talked to Parker before the race today, he kind of laid down to me what he thought was going to happen. And it's almost sounding like maybe he's been an analyst or reporter before <laughs> because he's kind of predicted how things are going to happen. He said, there's going to be carnage. We're going to be able to move our way forward. We think we're better as a race car than we were a qualifying car. Pick up a few each stage, get inside the top eight, maybe the top five by the end of the race. Maybe we can steal one he's thinking he doesn't have to win it'd be great if they do but they think they can point their way into the playoffs riley herbst has still got the advantage parker kligerman might be able to close that gap a little bit more before we're done today we see that bubble point look on the left there kligerman just out by 20 herbst in by 20 parker runs in fifth riley herbst runs in 13. Yeah, that was all the way down at one point in time after Riley got spun in the, the second time that uh, it was down to two points. So uh, as Jeff has pointed out, Riley Herb's done a great job battling back from the, the two spins. Uh, and there's no reason. We talk, You said call this overtime. There's no reason to think that we're going to have overtime, one overtime right here. That's right. They get multiple attempts at it. Uh, that means it's a two-lap shootout. They'll take the green. They'll take the white. And the next flag after that would end the race. But if the caution should come out before they get the white, Jeff, they'll try it again. Oh, yeah. The other driver that's had a good comeback is the nine of Brandon Jones right there in that bright yellow car. Uh, he had trouble in first lap of practice yesterday. Had to go to a backup car, started in the back, no laps on this car whatsoever, and he's battled back, and here he is sitting running in 12th, and he's only 58 points back. Now, that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but if these two cars have trouble that he's racing, the 98 and the 48, he could be right back in this battle as well. Yeah, and they have multiple road courses plus Daytona uh, before their playoff start, so uh, a, a lot of positions that could be changed. So how about this, guys? How about this for a stat? 13 different winners here and 13 tries to the Xfinity Series. Five of them were first-time winners. Four of the top five drivers in the queue right now have never won before. Could increase that number today. Will it be six of 14? Justin Allgaier says no. He does not want that to happen. They will get the choice this time, which lane they will take at the green flag. And then they will fire off. Where's that smoke coming from, Jeff? I think it's coming from the exhaust pipes of the 19 car. 
Connor Bozak. That's never a good sign. No. Boy, and you can see it. It's just increasing now. He's chosen the outside, but ooh, he may come to pit road. No. That is bad. Okay, coming to the green. Overtime presented by Credit One for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Road America. Allgaier in the red car. The black car is Sage Karam. Sage Karam. Behind Allgaier, his teammate, Sam Mayer. In the restart zone, they hit the gas to the finish. Like Sam Mayer might have spun the tires just a little bit. That might open a door here. Karam to the outside. He's looking to that high side of Justin Allgaier. It hasn't worked all day. Can Karam make it work? Josh Berry through. He's the car furthest on the outside. There's Good something old. on the racetrack right here. Yep. Coming out of that 19 car, I think. Still smoking is Connor Mozak back behind all this action. Kligerman trying to hang on to his spot in the orange and white 48 car. Allgaier now down the hill with Karaman Mayer in tow. Josh Berry, silver car on the inside, trying to outbreak Cass Rala. He does so. He'll get fifth. So we saw that fluid down in turn one. The next car to go through that corner is going to be the leader. NASCAR has spotters looking at the track from different angles. We'll see what they see. Or if they believe that the thundering herd can go through there and race for the win. Coming to the white flag here. Well, you can see Saints Karen there really hanging this thing out, giving everything that he has to try to get close to this seven car, Justin Allgaier. And that's the car that was smoking, we believe. Connor Mosak now off course in the 19. Justin Allgaier. Caution. Now, oh, there it is, DJ. The eighth caution of the day can't leave Mosak in a dangerous position. And the track, we think, may have a little fluid on it down there in turn one. Yeah, I think it's a combination of that, sorry, Jeff. Yeah, let's do this all again. <laughs> That's right. You know, last week at Pocono, the NASCAR held the caution in the cup race to try. They thought the car was going to get rolling, and it never did. And today, so far oh. around, look at all that. I mean, they, they had to throw the caution. You couldn't send the cars back through this. Interesting. Uh, the next couple of cars through did. Thinking that's reasonable. probably water. But okay. you still can't leave that there. It's not like it's going to evaporate by the time they get back around. And, of course, this is, you know, this car <laughs> stopped. Justin Allgaier's team looking on, saying, no, we had it in hand. No pit stops here. You could put fresh tires on, but in road course racing, you just want to maintain that track position. No reason to do it here. And so, DJ, on that restart, it looked like to me Allgaier brought everybody to the start to the restart zone really slowly. Yeah. He had the pace really pulled back. And when he accelerated, Sam Mayer, he spun the rear tires. And that was an advantage to Sage Karam on the outside. Sage Karam was the first guy we've seen in the last few restarts be able to take advantage of being on the outside. He came out in second, but it all started it all started with the seven with a slower restart. And that gets very difficult for the guy that's behind him because you're anticipating when he's going to go. And when he goes at a slow pace, you're trying to get speed up quickly. And it's much easier to spin the rear tires. Let's see what Algar does this time. I'm sure he won't do the same thing because the, the role as, as the starter is to mix it up every yeah. time you can to surprise the people around you. Yeah, so a savvy veteran, and we're, who we're talking about here was Justin Algar. You can see, and and so you've got a young man that's trying to win his first race right behind him. He's anticipating this, wanting to go, wanting to go. Yeah, you can see, definitely. That there, he spun the tires just a little bit there. And then you've got beside you uh, a, a young man that has very limited experience in the stock cars and in here in St. Caraman trying to make this happen. So Justin Algar is just using his experience to his advantage. And it will not be the same this time. We have to hope, too, that Sam Mayer isn't getting it in his own head. But remember, the last week at Pocono, it, he was so upset about how he raced his teammate, Josh Berry, in that case. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that restart, I don't think, was that, Dave. It's just hard to anticipate yes. when the guy leaves. Now, the question for Sam Mayer is what line does Sage Karam take? And whatever line he takes, you take the opposite. <laughs> if Sage goes to the outside of the seven, 
then you go to the to behind the seven. If Sage goes behind the seven, you've got to take the outside. Yeah. You cannot give up a full two rows. So now he doesn't have the choice. His choice is going to be decided by what Sage believes is in his best interest. Sage Karam with the one off in the 24. Kevin, he's looking good right now in second. And kind of the debate is, where do you want to be on the choose? He chose the outside last time and hung in there, but it kind of sounds like uh, we may want to stay on the inside this time. So that debate is still going on. He asked, how is my back bumper? The one has been running into me. He said, I think it's okay at this point. And Sage said, okay, we're going to talk about that after the race. But let's just think, think about big picture. One-off situation. I think it's been 10 years in Indy Lights since Sage Karam has won a single-seater race. He swept a pair of races when he was 50. 15 years old here in junior formula cars. What a day this could be. You think about what Shane Van Gisbergen did in a debut. This is not a debut for Sage Karam, but this would be a massive story if he can get this to victory lane in a fill-in opportunity. Kevin has mentioned the Indy Next Championship in 2013. He's raced in IMSA and in trucks. He also missed his high school prom to race in the Indy 500, so, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a no brainer there. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> you know, he broke her heart. <laughs> hey, but there's, you know, here's a, a thought. I was thinking about the same thing, Jeff, when you were talking about where does he line up here. But if, if your thought is that you can't start beside him because you can't be beside him through turn one, then your other choice is to try to line up behind, lay back, and try to anticipate a little bit better because your next move is going to have to be to hit and be able to keep yourself close enough to hit the back bumper of that seven guard. That's the only way you're going to pass Justin Allgaier. Uh, I'm sorry. He's just he's too good, and his car is too good today to think any other way. And, and, and and Justin knows that. <laughs> so yeah. He's got two guys behind him looking for their first way. Actually, Parker Klingerman also. Yeah. I mean, he's got three guys behind him that are exceptionally hungry. And so Justin knows that he's got to leave turn one and have some space. He cannot let those guys be on his rear bumper entering turn three because it's just too tempting for a guy looking to win a race uh, to get into the rear bumper and move you out of the way. So this is great theater we're about to see. I got to tell you another couple of reasons to go see Oppenheimer, which is in theaters now. Not only is it an epic thriller about a man who risked destroying the world in order to save it, but it's directed by Christopher Nolan and it's shot in IMAX. So if that's not enough, DJ, I don't know how I can get you to the theater. You're talking me into it, Dave. I, I don't know how I can pass that up. <laughs> Red flag now displayed by NASCAR. They're holding the field there while they get the track prepared for another overtime. Yeah, I was thinking about the 7 o'clock movie tonight, but we may still be <laughs> racing here. So, And we've seen this movie before at Road America, have we not? <laughs> yes, we have. They have a tendency to go on. He's always right. All the buddies know, and he's always right. Now here comes Denny Hamlin to the inside. He runs the five wide, almost into the fence. So I'm sure he was in the right there as well. Did he have a right to be mad at you? Larson loses the lead. Hamlin's out front. Both guys wrecked themselves. I've been cost a lot of uh, good finishes uh, by him throughout my career. I didn't hit either one of them. Didn't touch him. And I know he says I race a certain way, but I don't think I've ever had to apologize to him about anything. But look at that. Wow, he is angry. Not that I'm sure he's going to say sorry after this. Yeah, yeah we're friends. <laughs> yes, this makes things awkward, but whatever. Oh, the honesty of Kyle Larson. You've got to love it. Denny came away the winner. And uh, it's not the rematch per se, but it's the next episode in their life together as friends off the track and racers on track. Happens on USA tomorrow at 2.30. We get things kicked off there, and then, of course, all the way through to post-race on USA and Peacock. DJ, you and I talked about it on Motor Mouse this week. It was high drama, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it may be over or just may be awkward. 
going forward? Yeah, yeah, we, it's hard to say exactly. You know, we're, we're TV analysts, and we can talk about it. We were drivers. We've been in both of these situations to where we felt like we were done wrong, and, and, and as the driver that was in the situation that Denny was in here, you just felt like you were, you know, racing hard, and the other driver had an opportunity, as Denny pointed out, that, he, you know, Kyle Larson could have lifted and maybe not hit the wall, but he probably wouldn't have had a chance to win the race either. So uh, I, I'll just say this. Look, as competitors, you, you, we can say whatever we want. The, the only thing that matters is Denny Hamlin feels like he was right. He gets up on Monday morning and he can look in the mirror and say, I'm good with, with what, with everything that happened there. And that's all that makes any difference. You have to have, the one thing you have to realize is probably you're going to get raced differently by Kyle Larson uh, at this point in time. Enough things have happened between the two um, that what, what you've seen and how you've raced Kyle Larson before and the way that he's raced you probably has now changed. Yeah, and it's it's so competitive. You know, the, that the, that series and this series both are so competitive, and everybody's trying to get wins. Everybody's trying to posi position themselves to win championships. That gave Denny Hamlin his second win. That's a big deal. Uh, and, and you're going to see aggressive driving, and when you see that, some are going to be mad. Kyle Larson... When I heard his interview, what he was mad about was that Denny raced him the same way that he felt like he had raced Ross Chastain last year when Ross had run into Denny multiple times. And, and Kyle's like, hey, I deserve more respect than that, right? And so it'll be interesting to see how they worked out. This is not the first rivalry, rivalry <laughs> we've had in the sport, and it certainly won't be the last. No. And the question is, what will Kyle do? You know, Denny was very vocal last year. I'm done with it. I'm not putting up with it anymore. I feel like I'm getting run into. I'm not putting up with it. And ultimately, he did. He made a move and took a win away and took and he got a win. And now will Kyle Larson do the same thing? I'll have to say right now, I, I think Kyle Larson has to make a statement. He doesn't have to go wreck Denny Hamlin. I'm just saying that he has to race Denny Hamlin differently right now and get a little bit more respect from Denny Hamlin and possibly other drivers that, that think because if you don't hear mm. who's going to be the next driver that's going to say well Larson is not going to step up he's not going to do anything about it so you may be take, get taken advantage of by others if you don't step up at this point again not saying he's got to go wreck anybody you just have to race them differently <laughs> fans enjoying the afternoon here what a gorgeous day in central Wisconsin, and it's not over. They want to stay to see who wins this race. Allgaier has command right now, but he's got a restart to deal with Sage Karam and Sam Mayer and Parker Kligerman, the top four drivers right now under red before we head to the next overtime. And guys, I do want to tell everyone who watched today and watched that big hit that Alex Labbe took into the barrier in turn number one head on uh, NASCAR confirms for us that he has been evaluated and released from the care center. Yeah, that's good to hear. That was just a terrible blow once again. But, uh, you know, the, the safety initiatives in these race cars uh, allow these drivers to uh, in these difficult situations to get out and walk away. Looking at the top 10, Kevin, the 51 of Jeremy Clements, former winner here, runs an eight. Yeah, that's worth a mention because he had some contact yesterday and they had to start in the back going to a backup car today. So I mentioned what a story would be if Sage Karam could pull it off. That's what we had here, what, six years ago, 2017, when Jeremy won here in the family program. And that was one of his two career wins. I, I don't know if that's in play here today, although with the way things are going, you never know with attrition. But certainly they have made the best of the opportunity driving forward inside the top 10. Strong day for Jeremy Clinton racing and their Chevy and Kevin I apologize if you mentioned it but that was in a this is in a backup car today DJ yes he took his uh, primary car here as I remember the story this was an old chassis for him in yep. 2017 as we watched him race to the win yeah we thought the strategy was going to be what we were going to talk about until they came to turn 14 here and had the contact and then he was able to get going and eventually win the race here and uh, what a huge day this was for Jeremy Clemens uh, his family everybody involved that uh, worked so hard just not only just to get these cars to the track every week but to compete at a high level and and he does that tremendous day Kevin mentioned the other win that came at Daytona where what better place to win if you're a NASCAR driver and his family uh, build their own engines they yep. they field the car themselves uh, and Jeremy now in, in his mid-30s is still in the series and loving it and showing well again here at Road America. Well, the dog days of summer are coming.
but a great finish is coming for us at Road America. Gorgeous afternoon at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And you see the overtime badge in the upper left-hand corner, the field under red, while track uh, re-preparation is being done by the AMR safety team. A lot of fluid laid down in turn number one by the uh, detonating number 19 of Connor Mosack. And uh, <laughs> DJ, it started, uh, looks like coming out of turn 14 all the way down the front straight, too. Yeah, we could see the smoke uh, at, before they went back to green that you knew something was going on there. And uh, you know, I'm not sure that, that he knew exactly how bad it may be, but yeah. this is going to take a, a while to clean up. I mean, this was put down uh, all right. You know, we talk about how long this track is and big it is. So this is going to be a, a cleanup that uh, is going to take a little bit. Well, I mean, as a driver, you're constantly smelling things. You're smelling fluids burning and, and tires and everything else. There's a lot There's a lot going on inside the race car, and that doesn't always mean pull over and no. stop racing. No, exactly. And, and, you know, you go sometimes, I mean, it, it, you don't hear a lot anymore about, you know, burning a piston and things like this but if that starts to happen and you get some smoke going and a lot of times it's things that will happen will load up and and you get that little bit of smoke while you're running around under caution and, and sometimes it actually could clear itself up a little bit um, if it's just an oiling issue that that may be okay once you get back and, and you apply the power so he had no idea exactly to what extent uh, things are going to happen but it obviously got really bad very quickly you ready to go to michigan NASCAR is on NBC and Peacock racing for the playoffs. Don't miss it because Michigan could offer drama, excitement, and, of course, uh, characters doing what they do in the NASCAR Xfinity Series here. That's next Saturday, 3 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. DJ, I remember you liking the Michigan speedway uh, a little bit for a lot of reasons yeah yeah i was able to win my first race there uh, in the cup series back in 1991 for the wood brothers and and uh, yeah yeah it, it was actually my to, people ask all the time what was your favorite track well my favorite place to race was michigan i like to win at daytona and indy but uh, <laughs> i love to, to race at, at michigan and i want to clear up one thing wait but back to a minute ago when I was talking about the the deal between Denny and and Kyle Larson I, I'm not saying that Denny NASCAR is on NBC and Peacock racing for the playoffs. Don't miss it because Michigan could offer drama, excitement, and, of course, uh, characters doing what they do in the NASCAR Xfinity Series here. That's next Saturday, 3 Eastern, on NBC and Peacock. DJ, I remember you liking the Michigan speedway uh, a little bit for a lot of reasons yeah yeah i was able to win my first race there uh, in the cup series back in 1991 for the wood brothers and and uh, yeah yeah it, it was actually my to, people ask all the time what was your favorite track well my favorite place to race was michigan i like to win at daytona and indy but uh, <laughs> i love to, to race at, at michigan and i want to clear up one thing wait but back to a minute ago when i was talking about the the deal between denny and and kyle larson i i'm not saying that denny hamlin was in the wrong whatsoever denny hamlin was you know, being an aggressive driver trying to win a race and there's nothing wrong with that i just said that you know he has to to be okay with it and he seems to be perfectly fine the way that that things went about and and he handled that Back to Michigan and, and, and there was a lot of races that no one liked to be racing with because uh -huh. there was one race there. I think uh, I think you beat the field by like 15 seconds. I mean, it was not even close. I had a I lot of horsepower, it. a lot of horsepower. <laughs> yeah. Robert and Doug Yates made me look like I knew what I was doing a whole lot. You had a heavy right foot, too. And a lot of bravery. Hey, you see the uh, overtime coming up it's been back gone back to yellow here so i'll be coming by the start finish line and eventually choosing yeah you know they have trucks right time. there they're trying to get all of this up but you never get all of that so you know the drivers coming through there at speed uh is going to be could be a little bit exciting as if we needed something to make it more exciting <laughs> yeah and how did how did these young drivers use this red flag how did they use it to their advantage? Where did they get themselves emotionally ready for this restart? Justin algar has been there, done that. I feel like he knows exactly what he needs to do. The break probably doesn't affect him at all. But these younger guys, when you go in from the heat of the battle 
to a red flag. It gets hot in the car. It gets really hot in the car. You're sitting there, and where is your mind going? Is it going into the negatives? Like, well, if I, if, you know, what are the bad thoughts? Are they good thoughts? What's the strategy? Again, I think that's where spotters, crew chiefs, all those guys become exceptionally valuable. Let's get your mind focused on where it needs to be focused. This is an exceptionally important restart coming up. Matt, you've got more on this wounded two of Sheldon Creed? Certainly, Dave, has not been the day that Sheldon Creed had hoped for. In fact, he has now lost half of his cushion to Parker Clearman. Now just 23 points at this juncture of the race. But when you look at his career, it certainly has been a good little career in ARCA in Truck Series Championship. And, you know, you've heard Jim Croce's song, I Got a Name. For Sheldon Creed, that song says it all. Sheldon's DNA runs deep in motorsports. His grandpa, Maurice, who's here today, began the family's racing passion on two wheels in Alpine, California. Now, now, Creed's uncle, Jimmy Brockman, raced on two wheels, often with his best friend, Gary. Those two were simply inseparable. Sadly, Sheldon would never meet Jimmy because he was killed at the age of 16 in a flat track motorcycle race on Gary's backup motorcycle. Gary honored his late friend two ways, helping Sheldon by spotting for him and giving advice when he came east to run stock cars and naming his firstborn son after his best friend, he named him Jimmy. You might not have heard of Jimmy Brockman, but I bet you know the name Jimmy Johnson. He's Gary's son and the newest member of NASCAR's Hall of Fame. Yeah, what a great story, Matt, and the connection you get through racing and to have Sheldon be a part of that is very, very special. Right in front of Sheldon, hadn't called the name of Stanton Barrett today. Stuntman Stanton is running in the 26th position for Emerling Gase Motorsports in that black car just in front of him. Barrett still doing Hollywood stunts, hawking the Stanton Barrett family wines. You see that on the side of the car. He runs a brewery in New York, so he's a busy boy. He makes vintage race cars for those that want to buy and race them. Kevin, what have you got on the 44 of Brad Perez? Well, I think some people are familiar with his story, but it's, it's worth repeating how interesting this is. This is a young man that didn't grow up starting racing when he was seven, eight years old. He was out of high school when he started go-karting in the Miami area, eventually got into cars and spec Miata and was working on crews. And he's done that going back and forth between doing some driving and working as a tire specialist. And that was the job he had at Portland earlier this year when Tommy Joe Martins, he had worked for Alpha Prime before, said, hey, Leland Honeyman has food poisoning. It might not finish the race so he started the race going over the wall finished it with a pretty good run until he said he made a mistake and took away a top 15 late in that race well that led to this opportunity here this weekend he's hoping to be able to crack inside the top 20 this is the only confirmed race he has with them but he thinks there might be some more a little later on and really wants to do an oval so uh, well done for someone who's doing everything he can to get a chance to live out his dream brad perez is definitely doing it. and i'll also ask him why they call him bread because he said where he grew up as a little kid uh, people had a hard time pronouncing his name so it just kind of became a joke and that's why his twitter handle says bread now if you follow him on social media kevin they they make light and uh, fun with that all the time and brad certainly has accepted that nickname bread over the course of his life hey want to let you know as it's gone a little bit long here at road america today all the post-race interviews will happen on the nbc sports app and the NBC Sports YouTube channel. So make sure you either download the app if you haven't yet or find the NBC Sports YouTube channel for all the post-race coverage. Kevin and Matt getting the word from everyone after this event, which has been eventful. To say the least, Jeff. Well, it's getting ready to get even more eventful. You can yeah. see the drivers really working hard. You know, as a talk, as a car is sat there under red flag, you lose heat in the tires, really working these tires hard to get them to launch off well, not spin on the launch, get into turn one, make grip. It's a lot of things that go into having great restarts, and it doesn't just start in the restart zone. It starts way before it, getting your brain right, getting your car ready. Yeah, we're getting ready to see the mindset of Sage Karam here in just a second. Hmm. As of where he chooses to line up beside or behind Justin Allgaier. Because he lines up behind, it, it's going to pretty much take contact for him to get around. It's such a tough choice because yeah. 
you're kind of giving up that you're going to leave turn one with the with the position that you need. You're going to have to go earn it somehow, some way. And Allgaier's just been able to drive away from all of them in turn one. Allgaier's a veteran. Karam has very little experience in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and so has never won. Sam Mayer has never won in the number one car. Parker Kligerman has not won yet in that 48 car. So the first two rows, well, we'll see how they look here at the choose. It'll be Allgaier and Karam and Sam Mayer going to the inside as well. Wow, I can't believe wow. Sam Mayer. Look, he, he could restart on the front row. He is going to restart on the third row. He believes so strongly that the outside won't work. Well, it's been bad even before all the speedy drive, if you will, uh, was put down. And that's going to be on the outside going into turn one because this is where we first saw all the fluids. And if you're Parker Kligerman, you could not resist the chance to start on the front row there in that orange 48 car. So here we go. Overtime again at Road America. Allgaier in the gas. Chased by Karam and Mayer. Parker Kligerman trying to get traction on the other side. Karam takes a peek. Allgaier stays on track. Blocks. Oh, his lead over Karam, but Karam with another look. And Sam Mayer's car looks strong, third in line. Can that young Wisconsin native make a move here late in the race? And he breaking zone into turn five. Sam all day long has been very aggressive on the breaking zone right here on the inside. Allgaier manages, here comes Karam. He's still got breaks, so does Mayer. Neither one can make a move on Allgaier. Is that Austin Hill going for fourth around Park Kligerman? It is. Wow. And Kligerman holds him off. Oh, well slip there by Justin Allgaier. Open the door. Sage Karam to the inside, entering the carousel, rarely making a pass there. Sage Karam now takes the lead, but Sam Mayer gets him back. This is all going down into turn eight. Now they enter the carousel. Oh, and Mayer gets wide. Justin Allgaier spins. Karam has the lead. Everybody's missed the corners. The last two corners, the three guys in the front position all had a chance to come out with the lead. They all missed the corners. Sage Karam leads in his Toyota, but here comes Sam Mayer. Compared to Karam, Mayer is a veteran of the Xfinity Series, and he's never won. He's hungry. Oh, he got to the kink way better. He's got positive momentum. Head into turn 12. It's an opportunity right here. Here comes Mayer. Ducks to the side. Under heavy braking, can Mayer do anything with Karam? Kligerman through to second. Karam has the lead. How much does Parker Kligerman have left? Oh, oh. Karam is off. Parker Kligerman now through in the 48. Just one more corner, then coming down the front stretch. But Sam Mayer is right there. Mayer moves him just a little bit. Sam Mayer now up the hill. And Mayer in his home state of Wisconsin will come to the white flag. What an incredible lap. Not any of those, none of those drivers had clean laps. They all missed corners. How can Parker Kligerman fight back? The orange car now to the inside. Austin Hill right behind him. Four wins all year on the season and not giving up. And Karam now back to fourth. And behind Bill, Riley Herps in that 98 car. He is driven up to fifth. Great recovery for the black 98 of Herbst. Sam Mayer trying to drive away. He yeah, shared the story. Grew up re real close to here, DJ, and now trying to come home first at his home track. Yeah, just seven miles away, and he has the best car of these as far as speed goes right now. It's just a matter of not making any mistakes from this point forward. Austin Hill now two-third. If, if, if I'm the spotter on the 98 car, uh, I'm sorry, on the one car, Sam Mayer, Brent needs to be saying, man, trying to overdrive corner entry speed. You don't have to do it. Nice clean entry there for Sam Mayer. No threat from Kligerman yet. Third place, Austin Hill. He came from nowhere last week at Pocono. <laughs> Can he do it again this week? But he's got a long way to go. Oh, the tire's just screaming. Tricky part of the track for Mayer. 
line on the exit. Just a couple of corners remaining. Turn 12 coming up. 14 total. Everyone settles down, now up the hill. Just a little left sweeper. And down to the right hand, turn number 14. If Kligerman can do anything, he's got to have a good exit off of turn 14 here. Sam Mayer is clean. Champion in the Arkham and Arts East Series. Looking for his first victory. It's going to come for Sam Mayer in Wisconsin at Road America. What a drive for Sam Mayer. What a day for Junior Motorsports there in Victory Lane here. And he is the 14th different driver in 14 NASCAR Xfinity Series races here at Road America. The streak continues. Wow. What, what an incredible, <laughs> with two to go, that lap. I mean, every, every one of those drivers in the midst of that battle can take a step back and say, oh, I missed the corner, I missed the corner, I got run into. I mean, it was, it was an incredible fight by every one of them. So Kligerman comes home second. He helps his chances for the playoffs. Austin Hill third, Sage Karam fourth, Riley Herbst unofficially fifth. We'll come back and talk to the winner and more in a moment. And breaking news, the winner at Road America, like much of the field, has damage. <laughs> Sam Mayer. We'll go to victory lane here, but as he was getting ready to perhaps do some victory donuts down in turn five, congratulated by friends, uh, this happened. Yeah, he goes down and I don't know if he's gonna do some donuts or what he's gonna do, he changes his mind, DJ, and then pulls into the oh, sand and then into the end of the asphalt. And <laughs> well, fortunately his wrong decision waited till after the checkered flag. That's right. All right, Marcus Ligerman. It is. Wow. Sam Mayer now. And this was how it happened. Allgaier with the lead. And Karam trying to get by. He does. But then here comes Sam Mayer. Yeah, they both just lost so much momentum there that Sam Mayer was able to get a great run. And then Sam over, overshot the corner there. The seven car overshot the corner. This is coming to the white flag, so Karam had the lead. Mayer was right there. Sam's car so good today. Yeah, he really had a fast car all day and had done a terrific job keeping himself in the mix, just waiting for the right opportunity. And it presented itself right here. Sage Karam <laughs> did not get into the kink very well. Sam Mayer alongside. Heavy braking zone. And this is where Kligerman starts getting ideas. He's watching this side by side. Yeah, yeah they both, both missed this. Yeah, both again missed the corner. And Parker's like, thank you, I'll take that spot. Up through 13, Karam with the advantage, and then off track. He runs off track, and then Parker turns into turn 14 and never gets to the bottom. And then there's a tiny bit of contact, but that allowed Sam Mayer to take the lead and ended up winning the race. And I don't think we should minimize the impact of the speedy dry and yes. the oil that was around the racetrack that may have had something to do with all the drivers missing and making mistakes and now he's going to celebrate <laughs> got the checkered flag sam mayer a first time winner in the nascar xfinity series uh, with damage on the left front <laughs> <laughs> And there's a ways to get back over oh, to yeah. Victory Lane here, so. It, it, and I'm not sure quite how he's thinking of getting there. <laughs> he's got to go find the entrance to Pit Road is what he's got to do. Down at the bottom of the hill going. Well, at this point, there why not just cut across? He's done. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Back up the hill, down Pit Lane, and that's where he'll find Victory Lane. So what a day for Sam Mayer. Uh, again, last week, disappointment at Pocono after the way he had raced his teammate, Josh Berry. He was disillusioned. Now he is in victory lane. He is the next driver to get his name in yellow for the playoffs. You see eight different winners now on the season, DJ. 
Yeah, and this is just shape enough to, to think that what the playoffs, the potential that is there, I mean, the chaos that we saw today, uh, that could be exactly what the playoffs look like for these Xfinity drivers and teams. Sam was in good shape points-wise, but this is now the guarantee into the playoffs. Matt Yoakum is in victory lane. Well, Dave, you can just add a little bit more damage to the front of that car when he came into victory lane as his father, Scott, comes up to the car, congratulates his son, Sam. Mayers once again in victory lane here. He came in and he ripped up some of the plastic checkerboard here in victory lane. Of course he did. Getting ready to climb out. Fourteen for fourteen here at Road America. Every little kid dreams, especially following in your dad's footsteps, of winning and then winning at your home track. The dream, did it match reality today? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this car is as fast as many 10 G. It was just about get about getting track position and we had it there at the end, and I lost it for a second, and then, I mean, all hell broke loose there at the end, and we ended up on top. Oh, my God, this team, it's so special to get that first win. I mean, that monkey off your back, that feels so good. I felt I felt it all day. Like, I felt like if I can do this one, I can do anything, and we, we came here today and did that. Third to first, third to first, then third, you made your way to second, and then back to first. How much did the speedy drive make the challenge even greater trying to get the win? Yeah because I was going to pass him off into 13 or 12 or whatever, and it went straight. <laughs> uh, there was no grip out there offline, and uh, it was probably a stupid decision to go on the outside of someone like that, but uh, all's well that ends well, I guess. All right, Sam Mayer, first-time winner in NASCAR's Xfinity Series, and what better place than do it than your home turf right down the road from where you grew up? Uh, no question, Matt, and that, of course, came from the Ruoff victory lane. That's Ruoff Mortgage for their support of the series, and now Sam Mayer in victory lane. He, he's over the moon, Jeff. Well, it's such a big win for Sam. Sam came into this series, everybody knew he was fast, yeah. and it's been much more difficult than Sam thought it was going to be. He's made some mistakes. There's no question about the speed, and connecting all the dots on a day like today and getting that win can be a launching point for this young driver. This can be the beginning of a challenge for this championship. Now he's got confidence. He's shown himself. He knows how to win these races. Could be a career-changing moment for this young man. You know, I think the most impressive thing was is he, he pointed out where he thought that he was making the winning move, mm -hmm. and it actually cost him a spot. He dropped back to third and then had everything within him, the drive, the determination, the talent to come back and still make it happen. And now he can reflect on the whole thing as the most recent winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Hey, who's going to win Richmond Raceway tomorrow? In the Cup Series, Countdown to Green starts at 2.30. We'll take you all the way through to the NASCAR America post-race on USA Network, and then that will also stream on Peacock. Again, a lot of this post-race coverage you can catch on the NBC Sports app and the NBC Sports YouTube channel. Check out what happened here today. Well, we're glad you stuck around to see Sam Mayer get his first career victory. What a deal for a kid that grew up just near here. He is happy, and he is the most recent winner. For Kevin Lee, Matt Yoakum, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Burton, and our entire NBC Sports crew, thanks for watching today. I'm Dave Burns. We'll see you next time. And for the Xfinity Series, it'll be from Michigan.